Welcome. Welcome to the College of Complexes. My name is Tim. I'd like to welcome everybody again to another illustrative night in the College of Complexes. Tonight, our speaker is going to be Charlie Paydock talking about the Roswell incident. There are two rules of the college. One is one fool at a time, and the second is no personal attacks. That means I can't call Charlie a schmuck, but maybe I will anyway. All right, Charlie, we're going to get into the announcements. Uh, uh, after Charlie speaks about his announcements, if anybody feels has an announcement for the for the uh, general overview of our college, please do so. I'm going to pause the recording while we have the announcements going. All right. You're going to have to get closer to the mics. All right, Charlie. Um, I uh, would like to introduce you now. Uh, you need no introduction, so go ahead and introduce yourself and uh, start speaking away again. We'd like to have everybody muted during his presentation, and then once the questions open up, we can bombard him and uh, hopefully bamboozle him enough. All right, Charlie, don't forget, go to full screen. There you go. All right, go ahead and get started, Charlie. Okay, uh, this is not too lengthy, but it should be, I cover enough a variety of issues here, so it should keep everyone interested. Okay, um, we're gathering here tonight to celebrate World UFO Day, which actually is on January the 8th, but this year is of some significance because it is of the, on the 75th anniversary of the incident at Roswell, New Mexico, which is easily the singular um, most extraterrestrial event of the millennium, as you will see. And there you go. That's uh, from a movie made in 95 um, concerning the, uh, we'll discuss this further, the land, the crash, of an alien spacecraft. Okay, it is certainly a matter of controversy, which I will explain to you. The government has been engaged in a cover, cover up since inception uh, to which the UFO community has challenged. Okay, now here's, uh, I threw something in. This is a self-assessment. And in your questions or rebuttals, I would like everyone to identify themselves, which, where do you fit? What are you, a number one, in which you think there's no evidence of UFOs? Two, that they possibly exist? Three, that they probably exist, and you're open-minded? And four, if you are a believer, and if you're five, you've been conscripted by the grace, and <laughs> I believe, <laughs> engage in open communication with the aliens. Okay. But no. let's see where you are okay, on no, this but, scale. Okay, please no, side mute yourself. Everyone, please. Number two. Thank you. Eliana, yeah. please. Ah, uh, thank you. Okay. On where did this UFO stuff begin? It all began on June 24th in 1947. A private pilot, an amateur pilot, was flying around Mount Rainier in Washington. Uh, and he reported uh, nine uh, uh, vehicle uh, planes flying in, in military formation. And he said they, they traveled like they were skipping over water. And he actually described it as delta shaped craft, which you see below. But this is the, the inception of the flying saucers. Cool uh, shape. The, the name. Do you want to see it? Okay, please mute yourself. Okay, now what happened at that time was that it, it, it generated in 1947, uh, an enormous number of re sightings were reported. And for, for a good period of time, this was the record number for any year. It's been surpassed recently um, with uh, internet communications, but uh, there were 300 reported sightings right around the state in time at very all portions of the nation uh, of intelligently controlled aircraft. 
That's a distinction. Intelligently controlled aircraft. Okay, also in 1947, there was the first appearance of the MIB, the Men in Black. Hey, someone who reported a sighting was in a restaurant and they were approached by some government officials who requested that he not discuss the matter any further. They would prefer that he did not. So we'll cover a little bit more of the history of the MIBs later on. It is maintained that as a result of activities such as the MIBs, that even today, only 10% of the UFO story is being told. So government officials like me are effective. Now, what about Roswell, New Mexico? Why is that significant? But in terms of military, it is militarily speaking, it's probably the most sensitive space spot on the earth. Uh, it was the site of Los Alamos is there. White Sands missile testing is in close proximity. Um, the nuclear test, it is the uh, base for all nuclear testing and development, as well as uh, uh, missile and rocket technology, uh, such as that obtained V2 rockets and so forth. Okay. Um, during this time period, their alarm was across the nation. There was a state of heightened alert, uh, and the military had fighters on standby basis and with orders to shoot any unknowns down. Any unknowns were the pilots were given authority to they were taking it seriously. Now, what happened on July 2nd? It was a particular rainstorm, a thunderstorm over in the town of Roswell, New Mexico. And some people were on their porch. I listened to their accounts and they, were, they observed, cited what they believed to be a UFO traveling in a Northwest direction. Um, uh, at 1500 feet. Uh, and during this, there was an explosion heard which was not like a lightning. It was in fact an explosion. And there you see what happened. Uh, I believe that a craft came down. Uh, we don't know the circumstances. Uh, we'll look a little further into that. Now, the next day, a rancher, Mac Brazel, Mr. Brazel went out to herd his sheep. They give them a new grazing area after the storm. And he encountered a debris field um, that uh, the sheep, for some reason, would not go near. They, they refused to move near it. Uh, but there was a degree, of, apparently, of a craft which had crashed on his ranch. Uh, he went to town and notified the sheriff who recommended that he uh, go to the Air Force base because as the sheriff said, they know about all things in flying. So you better, Mac, he said, Mac, why don't you go tell the military and see what they've got to say about this. Later on, uh, getting a little ahead of the story, uh, but the military closed off, off the area, all roads, to and from the debris field. Now, what's the significance of Roswell? I've hit on it a little bit, but it also was the wing of the Air Force, Army Air Force at that time, which had dropped the atom bomb over Japan. These were the crack pilots and airmen of the military of the United States at that time. Uh, in order to get assigned to this unit, you had to know what you were doing. This was not for flunkies or wannabes. And actually, after assignment like this, probably your next assignment would have been to the Pentagon. It was a stepping stone. So these guys knew what they were talking about. You can see the logo on their patch was an atom bomb. One thing I just wanted to let you know that in, in all this pertains to all periods of time, 
is that the U.S. Air Force will never admit that they don't control the skies. So you have to think of their motivation in all of this. Now, at the time, one of the generals, uh, several were involved, but they said, go ahead and issue a press release. They signed this to uh, um, uh, a major, Gen Jesse Marce Marcel, and he was the intelligence officer. And he and one other member of the unit traveled with Mac Brazel, Jesse Marcel, uh, to the, the site of the debris. It was about 75 miles north of Roswell. Uh, I should add that on the way home, uh, there's a celebrated event in which uh, Major Marcel made a stop on the way home to show his wife and son, even though it's late at night, some of the debris, remarkable thing that he had collected at the site. Anyhow, in military faction, I, I always like this, people don't note that, that the headline was, they captured uh, a flight. They also made a mistake in the press release. I had do these, but they said that the craft was flown <laughs> to another Air Force base. It was, which led the media to believe that they could fly it, which was a mistake, but it nevertheless got out there that that was they had to correct it um they were not able to and there you see the local headline this appeared in um newspapers across the united states including the chicago tribune the cover and the chicago daily news as far as i know this was uh taken as a headline news across the nation and not limited to uh, that area by no means. Okay, this is the press release itself. I don't know if we have to read it all. Anyhow, the 509th announced at noon today that they came in possession of a flying saucer. See, that terminology was already being used. It was oval and shaped like two inverted saucers. Face mouth to mouth, the entire body glowed as though like we're showing through from the inside. Now, this is in the newspaper account from the statement issued by the military. Okay. Now, as I stated, uh, Major uh, Marcel um, and one other officer collected debris. They were followed up by virtually everybody on the base was ordered out to this site. And they were assigned to collect uh, all any debris that were in the field uh, and, and truck it up out of there. Um, that it was the form, we'll see it was in the form of pieces of metal. Um, but they not only did they clean the debris, but they returned every time subsequent to a rainstorm to make certain that all the debris was collected, which may have surfaced due to a uh, uh, rain formed for three years for a stretch of about 280 feet to three quarters of a mile. Um, okay, what they were picking up at the site, they collected and brought to a hangar that um, was uh, something called memory metal. So that if you crumpled it up, it's somewhat like tin foil, but if you crumpled it up, it could, you almost felt like you had nothing in your hand but if you opened your hand, it would revert perfectly back to its original shape. That's the name, uh, memory metal. Um, the, uh, um, this was collected and flown to the, um, we'll see this, the Air Force Research Facility at Wright-Patterson, the central uh, base for air, air technology. Um, Let's see. Uh, also, actually, I was thinking this would be pretty cool to make automobiles out of this because if you got in an accident, it would automatically revert back to the original shape. If you cracked up your Chevrolet, it would automatically look like new again. But it's called memory metal. Now, it's indestructible. It wouldn't melt. 
they couldn't, they tried pounding it with hammers. It was virtually indestructible. So whatever these aliens were using to make their craft out of, they were pretty good at it. By the way, they weren't certain. There's, un, there's no reason, explanation of why the plant craft crashed. There's some reason that it may have been radar interference um, by the, uh, the base itself, perhaps lightning, who knows? Anyhow, that's never been perfectly ascertained. Now, not only did they collect the debris, but other civilians had gotten out to the site, such as the fire department and all the word spread around the small town, but they started collecting immediately anybody who had to help themselves to a little trophy. Uh, and they went so far as they even ransacked their homes for any or all remaining crash materials. There were some guys who were drinking beer. And one guy said, oh, I got to I got to say, it was sometime later. He said, I got some of that memory metal. And he brought a cigar box. He had a few pieces of it in a cigar box. And the next day or so, they showed up at his doorstep and said, sir, we'd like you to hand us over immediately um, uh, any, any of that. By the way, OK. Yeah, so the people, OK. Now, one of the other, this is just a little factoid. One of the things that's amazing with FOIA FOIA request for information is that there are no records anywhere available in the archives of the United States or the military of any communications to and from that base for a period of two years, which is singularly amazing. It was not isolated from the rest of the world. But the you could see the cover up was in, in progress. Now, somebody had tried to actually post a story on the Associated Press Newswire. And for some reason, immediately a bell rang and the clerk who was doing so was told that the transmission had been blocked by the FBI. Blocked by the FBI. So the cover up was in progress. Now, the following day, we'll get to it, there was a press conference called. Now, what happened was, there's some reason to believe that there were two collections of debris. One which was shown at the press conference and one which was actually collected at the site. Uh, we'll see now, you have to determine this is uh, where issues were raised. Um, by the way, okay, now this is, there you see on the left, Major Marcel, uh, we had an easy intelligence officer. So he yeah, was familiar with the technology of all aircraft and balloons, anything in the sky set up by the Air Force. He was, he was expected to be an expert on it. By the way, there was no, the military we'll get to was claiming that it was nothing more than a, a weather balloon or a radar balloon. Uh, you can see this is what they showed the press. Uh, you might want to see that uh, Jesse Mar Marcel was being used as a patsy. Uh, uh, so that's what I mean. The only thing the public got to see at the press conference the following day after the incident were debris from a weather balloon, which anybody, you don't even have to be in the Air Force to ascertain that that's what that is. Now, what the UFO guys did, they noticed that the uh, general there was holding a telex and they were able to get the original negative of that and they enlarged it to see what was discussed. And I didn't do the whole, all of it, but you can see <laughs> his message that communication concerns and mentions victims of the wreck and it talks about a disc. Now, does they look at that photo. Is anywhere in that photo you see victims of a wreck or uh, a disc? Does that look like parts of a disc? 
Not to me, they don't. Okay, and this is what the government came up with. Um, uh, but even though the, now what they did was order that no one, no one in the military as well as civilians were to, to discuss this in any fashion. And I have to remember this is right after World War II. When they they keep quiet, people follow the rules and they kept quiet. And there was no deadline in which you could discuss it. But no date was given. You would tell you keep quiet, not discuss this now or at any time in the future. Zero, unauthorized. But later on, um, Army officer said, um, what I saw I had never seen before. Okay, uh, getting back to the, the debris site, it was a stretch of desert in which allegedly sand had turned to glass. And as I mentioned earlier, may have been brought down by radar, radar interference with the craft's guidance system. And there's just as someone's uh, photo of what it may have appeared like. That's not an actual photo. Okay, um, the U UFO investigators have gotten depositions from witnesses of the uh, incident. They started out, they, the first book issued, they had 62 immediate witnesses. And at last count, they've exceeded over 600 eyewitness statements to which they have oral written uh, videos. You can even find these on YouTube. Uh, statements by people who are aware of certain incidences. They even interviewed people, guys who had been paper boys who were out early in the morning and saw military trucks traveling through town, loaded up with things under canvas. They're very thorough about this. Okay. <laughs> now, another individual involved in this, um, uh, Jim Davies was a mortician and he was contacted by the army base, the hospital corps. And he was asked if he had any, he had a supply of small coffins, children size coffins. Um, he was also asked about, apparently the uh, victims of the wreck had remained in the field for a period of time, a few days. So there were questions and concerns about preserving tissue of bodies, possibly cloned, which uh, had been exposed to the uh, uh, environment. Now, as it turns out, there may in fact have been two, two landing sites, so to speak, debris. It appears like the craft may have hit the ground once and then traveled on even a few miles and it came to a final rest. So there's some reason believe there were two sites. Now at the military hospital, another person, we don't know her name, she was a nurse that was conscripted by the doctors to assist in an, an auto, autopsy, which was performed on the bodies of aliens, which had been uh, uh, at the site, taken to the hospital. Uh, she didn't keep quiet. As a matter of fact, she met with that mortician and explained what had happened to the hospital. As it turns out, shortly time, not without any announcement, she suddenly was no longer on the staff of the hospital. Uh, the guy was told it was his girlfriend. He said she had been transferred to England for Kevin is. And then they couldn't reach her either. And they said, uh, tragically, she had perished in a train accident, plane, airplane accident. So that's what I mean. That's how quick these guys work on this stuff. Okay, now the government explanation is 
that the debris found were balloons used for weather or as radar targets, or they had another program to detect nuclear tests or the launch of the ballistic missile. This was before the days of the U-2 spy planes. So there's a, there's a sound channel in the, in the ionosphere in which sound travels. And they were particularly interested in the Soviets didn't have the bomb yet. And they wanted to find out if, if those commies had, had exploded an atom bomb. So they, were, they had a special type of balloon uh, for that purpose. Okay, that was uh, also the project because under the name Project Mogul, I don't know if the name has any significance. Okay, another thing that came along a few years later was another balloon project in which they were, it's called High Dive, <laughs> in which they were, this is the beginning of the space race and so forth, and they were trying to ascertain uh, high altitude, that's what I mean, developing the U-2. Uh, conditions are obviously different at those heights. And they uh, were using uh, crash dummies. Um, and the military tried to say that if anybody said they saw aliens, they were just mixed up uh, with, with these crash dummies. They'd never seen anything like that before. Now, the only thing was, the test for high dive only commenced like six years after the Roswell incident. And they said, well, people just mixed up the dates. They didn't, they didn't remember. So they would say, oh no, those were just, those were our test dummies you saw that we were uh, testing uh, high altitude things. Uh, now how you could confuse uh, this gray, this little guy, we had a six foot tall, 175 uh, pound test on me is beyond me, but they expected everybody to believe this. Well, to, needless to say, some people were skeptical regarding this explanation. Okay, so now we're coming up in summary, the government, there are four explanations for what happened at Roswell. One, a UFO crashed. Two, a weather balloon crash, as we saw at the press conference. Three, was it one of these higher upgraded secret spy balloons for nuclear testing? Or four, was it one of the high dive balloons? You click off which ones on this multiple choice question. Okay, now the government later came along because issues were raised beginning, actually it began in 1978. Uh, Jesse Marcel broke the silence and gave a radio interview. And it was brought to the attention of the UFO, UFO guys, the investigators. And that started setting things going. Now the government tried to put a lid on this. So uh, for request to Congress, before going to Congress, they issued two reports. Uh, 9994, which was totally inadequate. So they tried again in 97, if at first you don't succeed. Well, nobody believed anyone. And I must admit, I handled a lot of government documents in my time, but I've never seen one with an editorial on the cover. This is a government printing office stuff. What's this case closed? That they're giving you the, 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 the results, you haven't even read it yet. Come on, guys. Okay, now we bring you back to the rancher. What happened to him? Well, he was escorted by the army to a radio station one day and told them to say, oh, I was, I was just confused. I didn't know what happened on the ranch. And shortly after that, uh, by the way, they had kept them in confinement for about 10 days. But then they walked them to a radio station. But shortly after that, he bought a brand new pickup truck. He had suddenly had a whole bunch of money that he could find a new Ford Ranchero. 
or, or Dodge truck. He left his job and he had enough money even to start a new business elsewhere. Not bad for a day's work, I'd say. Okay. Now, also one thing in, in reading, uh, they were talking with uh, Mac Brazel about what happened. And a little green man, they said, oh yeah. And he, he listened to them and he was didn't say anything. And then later on he said, uh, they were gray. He said, they were gray. Okay, now also in the meantime, uh, a general flew from Roswell to the White House to uh, appraise the president of the United States at the time, Harry Truman, uh, after an initial investigation. This made it all the way to the White House. Also, I should say among the debris, uh, I didn't mention there were, there were things called uh, pieces of, of structural elements, uh, lightweight, seemingly described like as if they were made of balsa wood, but they contained alien alien symbols. And there you see, you have, no one's ever deciphered what these say or mean, but these I beams were there. Uh, also regarding the debris, it took three, from my research, indicates that it took three C-54s, which are big transport planes, 4,000 payload, to transport the debris to the Wright-Patterson uh, Air Force Base and other locations. One guy reported one of the pilots of these planes said it took all day to load his plane. So they tell me, oh, that was, that was just a weather balloon? Okay. Oh, I just wanted to say, if you guys are fans of ancient aliens, this is floating around TV right now. I see all the time. Some guy claims he was out deer hunting and he picked up a relic, this stone at the site, the location. It's total nonsense. This is, uh, this is, a, I've actually, when I saw it, I've seen this in souvenir places. They sell these magic stones for new agers, uh, earth-based religions. They're like lucky, lucky charms or something. And I said, that's not, that's not a relic. That's, that's just made, made in Japan or something. I don't know. They sell that. <laughs> but they have a whole episode. Uh, this, 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 oh, this is from Roswell. You know. Anyhow, I, it, this is um, one thing about it's uncertain precisely what they, they took looking into the aircraft, but it appears that it was operated by placing both hands in a biomorphic control panel, a biomorphic control panel, which interface with the brain of each crew member. And it picks up thought patterns and the pilot guidance system has no wires, bolts or screws. And also, amazingly enough, the engine looked like it was grown and alive. So that's somewhat the technology that's been coming out of it. Of course, a lot of this research takes place in areas such as Area 51. Um, now, uh, as I said, uh, Jesse Martel started, the, started talking about what happened. Uh, obviously displeased from the fact that he was presented as some sort of nincompoop patsy that didn't know what a weather balloon was. Uh, but anyhow, more and more eyewitnesses have been willing to come forth. And there's even a book published, among many others, um, by a uh, witness to Roswell, by the number one uh, guy collecting statements. Um, Donald Schmidt is his name. Um, if you're also looking for something else to read by that, anything by Stanton Friedman, F-R-I-E-D-M-A-N, and he's the number one researcher on this topic with a whole host of books uh, on, on the incident. So uh, this is a new book with the latest update 
uh, of witness statements that people are making deathbed confessions, as we saw earlier, uh, and are telling their family once and for all uh, what went on. Okay, this, uh, this is what I mean, an incident by event. This guy mistakenly uh, believed he saw a newspaper article about Roswell and he thought he was authorized then to talk about it. So he, uh, he gave a radio interview in which he told about that he attended a meeting with President Eisenhower, Nixon, and FBI Director Hoover in which the president, after listening to them, said, we have to complete, keep this thing completely silent. And now shortly after that, he was on his way to a grocery store when two guys showed up in black suits out of the big black limousine, limo, big Lincoln limo. And they told him, they said, hey, buddy, we told you not to say or publish anything, you get it? So he was reminded uh, of his orders. Now also during this period, the 70 period there, a lot of you may not know this, this is the source of the MID information, book published in the 60s, um, who, who have MID who challenge uh, the government denial, anyone who challenges the government denial that saucers came from outer space. Originally, Apparently, you were visited by not only two, but three MIBs. Uh, so Ed, anybody who thinks they know too much, you don't want to get in that category. Okay, my own view is that it's bad policy to allow any of this to be controlled by the Defense Department or Homeland Security. Turn it over to the civilians, the State Department or the UN uh, delegation. High Commissioner, um, don't the fence is a little too strange. Okay, now you may say you have no evidence. Well, I say we've got plenty of evidence. Now, if all of these depositions or statements are taken as verification of the events, as far as I'm concerned, you could be convicted uh, and put given the electric chair on evidence, this evidence alone, the evidence such as this. So it is accepted in a court of law um, as acceptable. Also during this period, now this was a leak. The government put together, you saw Eisenhower, that we gotta keep this secret. And they assembled what is known. Now somebody leaked the documents to the formation of this. The government will, the United States will deny they exist. But there was a list of a select committee of scientists, military officers and government officials, uh, 12 of them who put together known as the MJ-12, the Majestic 12 uh, to research this topic. Needless to say, none of their evidence has ever been presented to the public. If you try to get information, by the way, a FOIA um, request, you'll see there on the lower right, that's the kind of document you'll get back with virtually everything that I deducted from it. I'll say, I tell you, take a look at this MNK 12 publication. Now there's a standard government publication. Uh, and uh, it says they're warning, this is top secret. Mark eyes only. They mean business. You get one of these. It's it's not just like, oh well, this is another government act. No way. This is hand carried and delivered, and handled in a secure fashion. Otherwise, you're subject to some penalty. A lot of little side here is that another thing. That's what I mean. The the military got to watch out. They, they thought they didn't want anybody to know about commies because allegedly this would, this would cause a panic. The commies would do it purposely to disrupt the United States. That's their, their kind of goofy way of thinking that there'd be riots or something anyhow. Also, this is accurate. 
is that it said the KGB agents were dispatched all over the place in that locale, on, acting under orders of Comrade Stalin to penetrate US intelligence, specifically on Roswell. And they tell us it's nothing but a weather balloon. Well, you couldn't fool Comrade Stalin. There you see some good commies. My favorite photo of commies. Okay, also during this period, the government undertook to um, operation um, the Project Blue Book uh, to investigate reported sightings between 52 and 69, 12,000 reported. And the conclusion was that uh, all of those were natural phenomena. They were just watching the sky or planets or aircraft traversing the sky. Uh, but Project Blue Book uh, said there's nothing. And there you see uh, one of the reports uh, by it. Okay, also I mentioned that the uh, debris was sent to hangar. It's, you also hear the term hangar 18 being used. Uh, and the, it's a, that is the location um, in Ohio where the uh, debris was sent and contains the UFO technology. So you, there is a show on uh, like Hangar 18 in books. Okay, now another thing is what did they do with the technology? There's some reason to believe it was shared with multinational corporations to foster the economy. There was an A-list of scientists. So they used some of it. One of the things, uh, lasers, which later evolved into directed energy weapons, which uh, some theorists claim to use as 9-11 to bring down the, the uh, um, uh, Twin Towers. Another thing is uh, stealth technology. And we're not just talking about this angle, a plane with all kinds of fancy angles. They use the plasma field. Come on, these are high-tech aliens. They laugh at us. Uh, reverse engineering, as much as they tried, as far as I know, after 75 years, they still haven't figured out how to turn on the, the flying saucer and make it fly. They gotta figure that out. Still working on it. Another thing I might add as a retired Fed is that counterintelligence officers, unlike other federal employees, are authorized to lie. If you want to use that, they, they can lie. Yeah. Uh, also, another thing the government does is information is compartmentalized so that no one person uh, knows exactly what's going on by design. So it's kind of like an internal cover-up. Oh, another of the reports of the government, um, the Air Force did this, they had an academic out of Colorado, and he produced a condom report um, uh, as justification to terminate any further uh, involvement in the project. I had a copy of this paperback book uh, after they closed up shop and said, oh, there's no need to do anything more. Another report, no one has ever gotten a copy of this, the Advanced Aerospace Threat Program. It's a 500 page, 500 page document uh, put together over several decades. It has never been publicly released. What's that mean? Oh, I just came across this myself because I'm a member, very active member of the Smithsonian Institution, um, the American Indian and American History. Uh, but I came across this propaganda put out by the Smithsonian. I even was thinking of canceling my membership. But they had this guy, they lectures, and they put this guy out there supposedly the curator of space history, and we asked an expert 
and he denied all Roswell aliens. He said he debunked it. I was looking at the comments. Somebody said this is perhaps remarkably amateur debunking. Get this guy, get a little, get this guy out of here. He do not know what he's talking about. But apparently they wanted, somebody came up with the idea of putting out some lecture. So I mean, I was looking up lectures on Roswell. I came across the one of the, you gotta be kidding me. Where'd they find this guy? Another Patsy. Okay, another little factoid is that they look now, who knows the night sky? Now there are about 85 identified named objects in the night sky if you go out there. And 64 astronomers, these are real astronomers, said that they had unexplained observations. And believe you me, this is remarkable. This is remarkable. What is going on here? All kinds of theories. Are the, uh, the young woman was asking, are there aliens on Earth? What is their plan? They're trying to figure it out. So you can see, are they, do they have a base? What are their plans? Um, one of the things that's talked about is that sightings may only be craft sent by a, uh, from a mothership. The mothership is off someplace else and the dark side of the moon, who knows where. But uh, we may be seeing only a uh, shuttlecraft set on, on ex explorative routes, just like they do on Star Trek. They use the shuttlecraft. Now, we get into some general things here about UFOs, and we leave Roswell behind. So this is of general information on UFOs. And the question is, how common is intelligent life in the universe? This is always asked. And as a matter of, there's one thing you have to keep in mind. There's uh, things about the Goldilocks zone, but there is one hospitable planet, much like Earth, for every three stars shining in the night sky. Now, it may not be perfect conditions, but it does meet the criteria of uh, that it might support life in some fashion. So go out tonight, look up in the sky, and for every three stars you see, one of them may have an Earth-like planet in their solar system. Uh, there's another thing. There's a theory that life began on Earth through um, panspermia. I'm not going to read all this. But microbial life on Earth is found all over the place. The mountaintops, the ocean, rainforests, Antarctica, they can survive any conditions. So whether or not there's life in other planets, it, it's evidence would seem to indicate so. Life is very tenacious. Uh, having spoken, given a lecture on Darwin and evolution, I can assure you, this is very accurate. Now, what are the plans of the aliens? And I don't listen to any of these people. I'm sorry. I'm a skeptic too. I don't put a lot into abduction stories. People dream this stuff. Uh, Benny Hill or Bernie, the Hills out of New Hampshire started this off. Um, um, but uh, people claim that they were abducted and put on various examination tables and so forth, various things, even implanted with uh, devices. But I, I don't know about this whole abduction crowd. Uh, although, as we saw there, the people who had been abducted, I noticed and I was wondering, had the chief people running the United States possibly been abducted at some time? They seem to have made, made the proper gesture as an indication to one another that they are in, in authorized members and have been gone through the introductory process. Okay, this is bringing us up to date. This uh, month in May was the first congressional hearing 
in more than a half century on uh, unexplained phenomena. They're calling them UFAs now, uh, unidentified uh, flying uh, airborne objects. Uh, they're saying the only thing they want to identify are uh, crafts that are sighted by military personnel. Uh, so they're not they're restricting it to no civilian object. They don't care what you see. You're like a bunch of nobodies. Uh, the government doesn't care what you got to say, what you see, or anything like that. Okay, and regarding a few other events, every ufologist has got knows about these. There you see is, uh, evidence of a landing. Anyhow, these are what I think are the major events that have taken place elsewhere with alien uh, uh, intelligently controlled aircraft. Very well known is the Belgian Wade, which lights for a period of time. For you Canadians, there was a Shag Harbor UFO crash in Halifax. That's an undersea one. Very, the most famous episode. I know there's one other one in Canada where the guy got burned, but Shag Harbor is one that's legitimate. Washington, D.C. is well known. The airport radar, National Airport, picked up um, objects flying around the Capitol at 7,000 miles per hour. That goes back to the 50s. Uh, in England, very famous event, um, U.S. space actually at Rendlesham Forest. This is a very interesting story that's worth looking up. And one of the oldest UFO stories is Aurora, Texas, in which they claim there was an alien pilot and they buried him in the local cemetery. Um, but that one goes back to 1897 and it's a little hard to recreate the circumstances. Just some fun ones. People say that all movies are blurry or the pictures taken uh, don't learn. Why aren't they clear? Well, here there was a film crew, a professional film crew at Edwards, big army base, Air Force base. And uh, an alien aircraft showed up and they filmed it with Hollywood quality cameras and all that, cinematographers. However, um, when they developed it and sent it to Washington, and then they asked what happened to our film, nobody said, oh, we don't know what you're talking about. We never got any movies. I said, we don't know what, what, what movie. Are, are you saying we should go see a movie maybe? Okay, another event you might want to check out too, very well known is Caxburg, PA, um, sometimes called the Pennsylvania Roswell, in which you can see that an acorn-like craft. Some say this was using Nazi technology, anti-gravity things. They also had an Aurora project, the government. We had a, an evening one years ago on the Aurora project. The US was trying to have anti-gravitational device Looks like they tried to fly this thing and it went out of control and ended up in a forest. And they took it out of there right away because they, they, it was obviously, I believe, an experiment by the government which didn't work. So they picked this up and transported it out of town in no time. Okay, this is a fun one. I love this event, the Lillian Land alien attack in which these blue balls would show up all over the place. And if they sh one showed up over your car, it would stop running completely. So your Chevrolet would suddenly come to a halt. You couldn't start it. But <laughs> it didn't seem that every car to selectively uh, cars would stop running uh, on the highway. I, uh, of course, hey, we had our own UFO sighting. We're almost done. UFA at O'Hare uh, in 2006 at gate C-17. Uh, they, they said, oh, it was just weather. But 12 employees 
reported uh, uh, aircraft uh, at O'Hare Airport. Uh, also, not too long ago, uh, UFOs were reported on my part of town in South Chicago. And they were, I like this, they were an attack formation. Now that's some reason to be concerned. Um, but oh, like deformation, uh, 10 minutes of footage right here in Chicago, Illinois. You don't got to go very far. Another project, I'm not certain if this materialized, but it's somewhat as like as a study. Um, but this is uh, radar stations looking for aerial anomalies. And you, you can have mobile units dispatched uh, around a network, a complete network of, of surveillance of the skies, uh, the data project. Now, this is another craft. Some it came out of what was appearing elsewhere. Uh, but this is the, uh, the Phoenix lights you may have heard. Uh, but from that, um, this may be the Phoenix lights. The um, government has a project. All I know about it, it's using this triangular configuration, which is good for going into water as well. It lends itself, but it's called TR3B. I have no idea what that means, the nomenclature. Almost done. I just want to have a lot of times people say, oh, there can't be, oh, you, Charlie, there can't be no aircraft. They can't travel. The planets are all too far away, way too far away. But no one can predict. Come on, I'm a transportation guy. No one can predict what will be the transportation modes of the future. Absolutely no one. Now, what we believe is that flying saucers don't travel like our vehicles. They jump from point A to point B. They don't travel in a linear fashion. That's why they seem to jump around the sky. And maybe they don't move that fast, but it gives that appearance that they are. But the craft is actually jumping around. Here's another way to explain this. You may look up in the night sky and you see a UFO on the, let's say the west side of town, and then it would disappear. And if you wait around, suddenly it would appear on the east side of town. So I try to make it easy for you to understand. One last thing, this is the last thing I'll cover. Uh, UFOs are not confined to the sky, but they have USO, unidentified submerged objects. Been reported to go to a depth as far as 20,000 feet. And they have been reported in oceans, rivers, and lakes. We could have one in Lake Michigan. Um, even in the Mississippi, there was a report. That's how it might look uh, to lend itself to undersea uh, travel. Um, these uh, undersea craft also supposedly uh, can bore directly into ice without slowing down. And they just go right through, leave a perfect round circle and go under the ice. So talk about setting up a base. They got a perfect hiding space. That's the ball. Anybody who challenges our government, I'll say you are of questionable allegiance to our nation. If you do not accept the explanations given to you, and like here, you're, you're gonna be like this dog, our master's voice, nipper. There's a thing, this is what we should say if the aliens come, have your local police department, they have one of these broadcasts that, that we are your friends. That's all you have to do. We are your friends. And thank you for coming and celebrating World UFO Day. Thank you. We have to do this. Private guards. Okay. Uh... Private guards.
300. Tim, let's go to questions. Can I ask you a question? I don't know why he's showing this. Tim, can we show ask questions? Substruck. You heard it hit the hole, and I never hear. Contact Dallas, give him the go. And my Dallas, get the DSRV moving. Dallas, this is Ruben James. Okay, I have a question. You have to be recognized by Tim. Tim, are you? Why? I'm here. Your silence. Um, I'm can, I, can, can you I, hear me now? Yeah, I can hear. Why don't you have people raise their hands? Sorry, yeah, well, okay, can I ask you a question? Eliana, yeah, will you let Tim chair the meeting? Lana, go first, and then I'll go with Sharon. Okay, very really quick. Um, I have a question. Thank you so much for uh, presentation. And I have a question. What if somebody decided to go to police station or, you know, or call 911, they saw you or they was somebody abducted, blah, blah, blah. What if police say, uh-huh, sure, and they ignore, you know, this question. And what if this person again decided to phone to 311 or 911? And, and what if again police will ignore? And what if it's well, did, did serious? See, then, then my question Anna, is, what's to do? Oh, yeah, let me answer it. Okay, answer it. You hear in the story that the guy did the same thing. He went to the sheriff. And the sheriff says, well, if you got a UFO, pal, go to the military. They're in charge of things in the sky. So mm -hmm. if you go to your local police, I believe you would be told exactly the same thing like they told Mac Frazzle. Mm -hmm. Why don't you contact the local military? And they are, I, I just told you, it's federal. And what is it? Police not, police not part of the military? Police station, not part of the military? No, the Chicago uh -huh. police are not part of the military of the United States. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Our Chicago police are different than the United States Air Force. Okay. Thank you for okay. What's next? Who's thank next? you for an, thank you for answer. Thank you. All right, uh, Sharon, go ahead. Um, all right, I'll I'll ask. I guess the obvious question: um, What do you think would be the reason for uh, the motivation for not uh, releasing information at this point in time? I mean, oh, good question. Everything was, was so- Tim, would you through. silence Ileana? Go ahead. Uh... Well, they, it may, they, as I say, they feel they, Brookings Institution did studies, or think tanks did studies. They believe it would cause panic. Uh, they want to control the situation. They want to look like they're in charge and they're doing their job protecting the nation. Um, there's all sorts of concern that these aliens have significantly advanced technology. You saw what happened in, in these movies like Independence Day and yeah. that moon movie, Mars Invasion. You know, it's a very legitimate reason. Uh, are they here just to establish diplomatic relations? Are they here to take over? Uh, let me tell you, that's why I said, you got to turn it over to civilians. And I used to say this to military people, I used to call them spooky. You can't, you can't let this over up to the military. Because they'll, yeah, you see in the movies, first thing they do, an alien goes down, they want to shoot at it, shoot it, shoot it out of the sky. Mm -hmm. I don't even know what it is. Yeah, that's why, I, you know, we are protectors of the United States and you're in unauthorized airspace. And that's what I mean, that's a military mind. It's very, you gotta, you cannot let, you've got to have civilians in charge of the military and you gotta have civilians in charge of any security of government, hmm. any, any level, really. 
I don't know if that answers your question. Well, I, I guess, you know, remember when, uh, when we had all those, uh, well, I don't remember the details, but the balloons that came, I think they, they made their way from Japan. People were... Um, I know all about it. Yeah, okay, so, so the government hid that and they, they, you know, they tried to cover that up, but then eventually they, they opened up and talked about it. So, you know, they didn't keep it secret forever. Yes, was, and they, they kept it they were, for the same reason because they thought it would be panic and all that, right? Exactly, you got it. They were <clears> fearful <throat> it would cause a panic. I believe only a few people uh, perished as a result, um, but they were tampering with one and it went off or something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but they feared it would drive panic on the well, you can imagine it. You're talking about California, Oregon, Washington. He said there's things floating in the sky, bombs from Japan. People be running for, you know, out of town or, you know. Yeah, it, but, but the government be, is, has talked about it since then. So, I mean, it's no longer something that they try and deny. You know, so why would they? Well, it didn't materialize. It, 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 I believe most of them ended up even in Alaska or British Columbia. It didn't materialize into any sort of real destructive <laughs> activity on the part of it. Yeah. Yeah, it, it didn't it didn't reach a threshold. Uh, and it probably was best. That's what I mean. They're they're told a lie. Um now is the that's what I mean. The debate is um, who, who's is panic worse than the protection? By the way, what's what's your cat's name? <laughs> oh, that one is uh, I think that's Cookie. I have three of them. Uh. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> yeah. Welcome to the college, Cookie. Yeah. <laughs> See mine too. Oh. <laughs> All right. Well, I think he's got a question. All right. Vic. Yeah. What are some alternate explanations given by skeptics for these UFO sightings? They're too easy. They're easy. Yeah. Um, the uh, natural events, uh, weather, like weather, weather, or sometimes just the night sky. People don't understand Venus, so forth, <laughs> or aircraft. That's the standard hmm. one. Okay. The standard one uh, is just weather, or now there are the unexplained ones, but for various reasons, they say the report is lacking verification, uh, it's anecdotal, uh, there's no record of it. Uh, so they dismiss it, you know. Yeah. I mean, there's other... a lot of ways. Okay, go ahead. No, go on. Well, this is a little different, but I know nothing about aerodynamics. So I'm wondering if the round shape is in some way particularly adapted to getting around in the sky. I mean, how did it, how did the saucer shape? catch on. I... Well, the astronomer out of New York, that uh, guy gives a lecture on why the universe likes circles, you know, round oh. balls. <laughs> and I'm yeah. not an expert on aerodynamic, but I believe the shape of our mercury capsules if you remember that, were considered to be the best aerodynamic design for some reason. Huh. So uh, you yeah. know, I'm not I'm not an expert on the wind tunnels. You know, uh, <laughs> when I design a alien spacecraft, you know, um, then again, they're not using, they're not traveling around, Vicky. Yeah. Like our craft do. Our craft have to travel through atmosphere. That's why you read science fiction. 
and future space travel. It's not like they're going through air and so forth. They appear and disappear. Uh, they change like, like, like beam me down. You get transformed into particles and show up someplace else, you know. So they're not using conventional. I don't even know if aerodynamics <clears throat> is of any concern to an alien. Okay. So they kind of jump around. Well, I don't know their mode of I can explain lift to you if you want. All right, go ahead, Bob. Okay, you lift, know. Lift, you, lift, okay, lift. You, know how, you know how an airplane, an airplane wing is sort of at an angle. And then there's the either a propeller or a or a jet thruster then that pushes that through, you know, pushes it through the the air. Well, because of that wind, because of the angle, the pressure changes. The wind hits the front of the angle of the of the uh, wing and then goes down. That creates an upward force, and that's what causes the plane to lift. So it's like a it makes like a right angle. It hits the underneath of the wing. And then it makes a 90 degree angle down and it gives, that's what gives it lift. Now, how yeah, well, I got an easier way of it. Does basically the, same thing. the helicopter does the same thing. The blades are also tilted, but in the helicopter's case, the blades are spinning so that, so that, so the air is hitting the downside of the blade, then making the right, the 90 degree angle down the force. And that gives the helicopter lift. And, so that's why a helicopter is going to go straight up. It doesn't have to have that force pushing it through the air because the blades are already blades are spinning so fast. So there's no need for that, you know, thrust motor to push push. All the, right, there's a lot of easier way to explain this, Bob. Now, now imagine, four, imagine four, a helicopter. Imagine if you put a if, imagine, if, an imagine if you had a hard cover over your imagine if you had a hard cover over your helicopter. There's your flying saucer. Just take um, a big giant well, bowl. And put it over a helicopter. Leave the bottom empty, and then it'll 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 fly like a flying saucer. Oh, no, that's ridiculous! There are four easy flight. Air flight can be explained in terms of physics very simply. You have four four forces. You have to overcome: lift, lift, thrust, drag, and pull pulls you down. So you have to have greater lift and greater thrust. And it overcomes the other two forces, very simply. Uh, however you achieve that, that means you start flying. Yeah, you can either be a fly. propeller or a, or a I jet. I fly if I could only develop greater lift and thrust. Like yeah, if you, if you had a jet, if you had a mo if you had an electric motor on your back with a with a propeller blade spinning fast enough, that would give you lift. You'd have to have a nice big battery and uh, or a, a strong bat, a powerful battery, and a uh, a uh, I, I, light I, enough motor I'm and blade. I'm aware of so, you know, lighter than aircraft designs. I was into balsa planes for years at work designing tabletop aircraft, which I was trying to fly down the hallway. Yeah, you, and you could also strap on a couple of uh, big helium balloons to, to, oh, no, no. to, to uh, I, give you a little assistance too. But I would design aircraft. I had all sorts of balsa wood paper and things like that, and all sorts of designs. I would try a hundred different designs. You would call them paper airplanes. But uh, these were a little more sophisticated than folding a sheet. But I spent years doing that, trying to get a, a vehicle that would travel down the hallway outside my office. All right, is that it? Who's next with questions? Uh, Charlie, what's inspired you to do this topic in the first place? Well, I have an interest in astronomy, uh, have over the years, and uh, 
Uh, I like science fiction as well. I, as a matter of fact, marketed science fiction books uh, at one time in my life. Um, so, uh, and UFOs actually is a branch. Alien certainly is a branch of science fiction. Every night I enjoy, I have this station where they have all the episodes of Star Trek one after another, all from starting at seven o'clock until 11 or so. H and I. Yeah. Yeah, Hero Channel. So, uh, yeah, I guess it'd be that. Um, there's many facets to it, uh, if you wish to call it a pursuit. One has to be eclectic, uh, you know. All right, Brian, what do you got to say? So I trust the government. They would never lie to me. <laughs> so <laughs> why should I trust you over the government who would never lie? Well, <laughs> are you trying to kill the messenger? I think that's the point, Charlie. There's no personal attacks allowed. No ad hominem. I'm sorry, Brian. You're ruled out of order. <laughs> well, I, uh, you know, I, I, was, I was just you about to join the rules. Communist Party. I, I guess I'm you not anymore. <laughs> you can't criticize the speaker. Hey, Charlie, you can insult the people, right? The people cannot say nothing to you. You're wrong, you understand? You cannot insult people either. What are you talking about? Uh-huh. No personal. And you know what? It's not only my opinion. Yeah, I'm going to get rid of this woman. What? No, I'm not getting rid of her. She muted herself. Hey, she she all right, get rid of her. She's breaking in. <laughs> Robert, why don't you... I can break? echo. Um, I... <sighs> I have a question, but also a comment in general. Um, the comment the okay. is follows. I have comments in the comment it. sections, okay? There's a separate comment section? Well, what we yes, do is we, have what we call a rebuttal, rebuttal section where you each okay. get a specified period Fair of enough. time. Fair enough. Then I'll ask my question. Please do. Why do you draw the line with alien abductions? You said during uh, earlier, you said, you know, I don't really buy the alien abduction. Um, these people, and you, Benny and Barney Frank, who um, there's no topic I've studied more than UFO abduction phenomenon. I have two advanced degrees. I love this topic. Um, I believe them to be highly credible witnesses. W what about their story or about the alien abduction phenomenon in general um, makes you question it? I have a background in clinical psychology. <clears throat> And I've heard everything under the sun. And I don't believe there's any limits to the faculty of the human mind. I've also had to serve in the capacity as an investigator in my of wrongdoing in the government. And I know for a fact, people will I sit there and they would tell me stories all day where I would read their depositions. And 50% of it is not true. I always go in with that rule. Um, for some reason or another, um, you know, if you could assign objectivity to this, but obviously a personal account, you know, uh, is in the the extreme subjectivity of it. You can't now. If we go pursuit of truth, uh, you can't choose a method that is based on the extreme of subjectivity. You, the only truth of any value is objective truth that is subject to test and measurements. Um, not every account or sighting is regarded as valid, but there is some test and measurement. Now, if you explain, if you can't explain it, at least they have that, but no, I, I, I believe people can imagine themselves in all sorts of situations. I think it's an inherent mechanism of the human being I'm not a Freudian, 
well, I, I, I guess I am. Um, so I, that's what I mean. I, I think it's numerology uh, uh, that their mental activity. Um, and we, we have the faculty of imagination. You know, why, how do we differentiate real from fiction? And many people can't achieve that. Actually, it keeps people alive. The fictions, if we really confronted the truth about ourselves, we'd probably do ourselves in. The similarity uh, of the witnesses yeah, and their yeah, testimony, we have how defense, common it is. We have defense mechanisms, you know, against the truth. Uh, our image of ourselves. Um, sometimes people might, I could think of all sorts of motivation for believing yourself singularly, um, singled out by aliens, you know. I agree with much of what you're saying. Uh, I but, mean, I, it's it's an area you can choose, you know. I I I kind of like these events and field field research, you know. Yeah. They're all okay. Maybe you want to come back and talk about abductions. I have reason to believe any number of the people in the college complexes at I, one time or another have been abducted. <laughs> I don't believe in it. I, I'm very open to it. I'm I well, question I don't my care belief about on that. It. I mean that's not a criteria. I mean, <laughs> it's up to the college to believe or not believe. Fair enough. Okay, uh, who's got the next question? Charlie, you're saying that you believe in um, the scientific method and the data. Despite all the data that's proving that capitalism produces a prosperous economy, why is it you're still a socialist? Well, we're, we're really going on a straight here. Actually, probably the aliens take one look at free market capitalism and say, what's wrong with the humans? When there are other methods, they'll say, what a primitive society. They, they're like, they're like primitives. <laughs> they're not an advanced society. They have free market capitalism. Let's not even bother with them. Leave them alone for a few centuries until they, they emerge and evolve have let evolution take place. Socialism is the advanced stage of evolution, Tim, and the, the advanced stage of a civilization. If we have free market capitalism, we're, we're still at the infancy, the onset of society. We've got uh, a long way to go. Until we just start. Uh, how, do you, how do you measure um, prosperous? Anyway. How do I measure prosperity? How would you measure prosperity? I'll, I'll, I, I'll get into that later on. Right? How about life expectancy? Eat, How about life expectancy is a measure of prosperity? <laughs> you know, I, I, I used to have three square, you know, cross, listen, the hierarchy of needs. There, how's that? Hey, that's a good answer, man. <laughs> the hierarchy of needs. Okay, uh, Michael Kazanjian, you're next. I'll lower your hand and unmute, Mike. Okay, Mike. You guys are, you got nothing here. Mike. Mike, can you hear us there, Mike? Hey, Mike. Can you hear us? Raise your hand. Be silenced. Silenced. I tell them to unmute. Mike, do you know how to unmute? Okay. Okay. Right. Yeah. I'm going to lower uh, your hand, Mike. Go yeah, ahead. Charlie, um, I, you gave a very good presentation. I liked it. What is your view of the 1950s and 60s contactees such as uh, Adamski and Angelucci and uh, uh, Dan Fry and others? Um, it, I'm always intrigued by the fact that the contactees were um, along uh, the West Coast in California, but do you have um, any, uh, there was George Van Tassel with his Yucca Valley conferences. What is your uh, view of the um, contact, these of the 50s and 60s? 
Well, I wasn't aware of that. Yeah, you seem to have studied these. Uh, I, I must commend you. I, I don't believe they were. First of all, I like to, I'd like to ask you a question. Why are they only in the fifties and sixties? Did they find out enough about you? What are they? I don't understand. Here's one question. I shouldn't answer a question with a question. How many people do you need to abduct before you find out what you need to know about a species? They say, now I gave a talk on Bigfoot. And they say, all we need to understand Bigfoot, Sasquatch, is one, one specimen, just one. Now I ask yourself, why do they need all kinds of them? Unless they're conducting experiments. There are a lot more. There are a lot more. Right. Then they're not limited to the 50s and 60s. If he's talking about the heyday of movies, I guess they were popular. That's what I mean. That's a very good, you know, actually, since the movies were popular in those days, it's only natural that people went to the movie theater and then went home and and lived it. Watching movies is a surrogate way of life. You can imagine yourself. I guess the same thing could be said of reading a novel, but you imagine yourself, the character in the movie, in the film. You know, uh, the hero and so forth. So they come home and then, uh, you know, I'm sorry, I. It's a clinical psychological explanation. I, 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 human psychology hasn't changed in the 50s and 60s. Maybe I, that's what I mean. Uh, you've got to ask yourself also another thing. Now he, he disputed it. Why did abductions increase and decrease, Mike, as you claim? Why did, why did increase and decrease? Yeah. No, uh, why did what increase and decrease? Abductions. Oh. Well, that's uh, what you're asking about, isn't it? Um, there, I don't, I can't, um, my computer won't tell me what, um, what increase, uh, spell that word that I can't understand. A B D U C T I O N. What are you a, talking about? What are you oh, asking abduction, about? Abduction. Yeah, abduction. I... Uh, oh, okay, abduction. Yeah, close encounter of the third kind. What do you think of abductions? Do you think they're lies? No, I think they're psychological aberrations. Okay. Um, okay, so the adoption did not occur. No. Oh, okay, okay. No. All right. Is that it? Is that it, Mike? Yes, yes. Okay. All right. Next, Next one. Bob we got Matter. Bob Matter. Okay. Well, uh, Michael just kind of took the thunder out of my question. I was going to ask Charlie, uh, you know, uh, if uh, maybe he knows more, more about it. But uh, what I've seen is that the description of aliens uh, that by these, uh, that these abductees give they always kind of resemble humans. You know, they always have like two arms and two legs and they have, a, they have hands with fingers on them and all of which, uh, you know, shows evolution from a fish on earth that had to go through, you know, millions of years of evolution and, and all that to arrive at, at that, at that, you know, our basic shape, you know, arms, legs, fingers, and all that directed from, you know, all directly traceable back to a fish. Uh, and I, I just, I was going to ask Charlie, uh, yeah, that's uh, a good how, many question. how many different, uh, uh, you know, do a comparison of, uh, of, uh, different aliens and, uh, you know, are they alike or dissimilar and, and why and things like that? Yeah, it's a very legitimate question. And having studied a lot of, Darwin and evolution, I, I've spoken on that and studied it. And uh, 
I mean, we're talking zoology and biology, right? Right. Uh, no, they species evolve under different conditions. Um, as a matter of fact, there's an excellent lecture, which I have to find it somewhere in my stockpile of things, in which the SETI Institute, those are the guys that do radio astronomy, sending, trying to pick up signals from outer space, um, SETI. And they do an excellent presentation on what an alien could or should look like. You're entirely correct. There's nothing that states, I try to think of utilitarian designs for a creature. And if you notice in my presentation, I included some different uh, types, body types. They're not all going to, they're not going to be obviously carbon-based life forms. Uh, you know, um, I, actually got to give it some more thought, but you're entirely correct. There's no reason that aliens now, it has been raised that the popular concept of aliens are greys. I think that's based, however, in the fact that we have the bodies of some of them at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base. Did you ask yourself that question? You're saying there's we have bodies of aliens at Wright Patterson Air Force Base. Air yes, Force? that was in my talk. They uh, had them in coffins. All the all the oh, yes. All the so coffins. It's, it's factually based <laughs> idea, concept. No photographs were ever given of those things though right well i think i said there's been a cover-up government government didn't want to cause the now you saw what happened to that nurse who got too talkative that could happen to you <laughs> why do you need to know what an alien looks like <laughs> you know you're gonna get visited man the mib's gonna show up Tomorrow, are you are you Robert Matter? <laughs> I'm basing it. Our image of aliens is based on the aliens that we have the specimens of aliens, just like Sasquatch. Sasquatch is going to look like the specimen that we have. Aliens are going to look like the specimen that we have. Pure and simple. But I'll find that uh, lecture, and the guy, Steve Suchek, is the leader of that. Gives an interesting thing on all the different designs that they could have. You know, they're going to have to have some sensory. You know, if you take anatomies of animals, you know, could you come up with a generic animal? I guess you could. But um, I don't know. I think greys are what we have encountered. Okay, uh, who's next on the questions? You guys aren't even a challenge. Oh, well, yeah, because it's not too damn controversial tonight. You're just talking about UFOs. You're all believers. No. Um, have any of you guys heard of MUFON? M-U-F-O-N? No? Of course. Of course. Why don't you explain what it is real quick, Robert? Um. MUFON is the Mutual UFO Network. It's a group of individuals who, um, it's all volunteer, very democratic. Um, they elect their leaders um, in the organization to represent them, um, and they investigate uh, UFO sightings. They try and debunk them themselves. They uh, take the sightings. They have local investigators on a precinct level, just like you would have in a, in a political party. And they investigate the sightings. They uh, take the reports. They report them to a national organization. And they try and kindly debunk them if it's possible. But if it's not, they send their report regardless to the National Reporting Agency. 
Well, the reason the reason I asked you to do that is I'm going to quickly share a screen so that if you guys really want to. Well, uh, no, please, no share a screen, Tim. I was just going to uh, Yeah, it yeah, just knock mine out a bit. I have a question. Wait All a right. minute, let me no. answer this one. All uh, right. Also in Chicago, Illinois, we have the Hynex Center at the what Northwestern center? University. And they have spoken at the college complexes. Mark Redegar, I'm in touch with him. We have, MUFON is cool. The, the Illinois chapter is very active. Uh, and they got their act together. Um, the, uh, but the Hynex Center is another site you would want to visit. H-Y-N-E-C-K, I believe. Uh, is now he was in the early days the government authority, the academic authority on on aliens. So he was right out of Chicago here, uh, one of the founding fathers of alien research, the Hynex Center. Now they don't have a real fancy website, but there is a lot of stuff on there, the Hynex Center. And that it's something you might they I would have them speak tonight, but uh, the guy's getting a little older and they don't do too many speaking engagements anymore. So uh, but they have spoken to the college. I think Margaret and Frank are sleeping. No, they're not sleeping. They're Margaret's just listening and uh, Frank's probably also listening as well. All right, who else has questions tonight? Anybody else? Yeah, I have a question. I, I was going to say my interest in um, UFOs kind of took off when I bought a book um, that indicated what were the good locations for observing uh, space intelligently operated aircraft. And in the back of it, it also had a form. Now, being a government employee, I guess I have to design forms and use them all the time. But they had a form for reporting uh, a sighting. And that led, sparked my interest in the whole topic. So if you fill out the form, you know, they'll pursue it, you know. Very often there, I don't believe, Robert, there's much that, very often can, can be done, but investigate it, but they will assign it. Well, I know the Air Force has a special division that investigates credible UFO claims, and they've been doing it since the 1960s, especially alien abduction. I know Rick Doty, I'm not sure you're familiar with. Are, are you familiar with Rick Doty? Yeah. He, he's, um, he was one of the individuals who was assigned to investigate credible alien abduction claims from the night from the 1980s i believe to 82 to about 90s early 90s i might add that there are conferences every year at different parts of the country by mufon and other parties uh there's one coming up it's in denver this year on july 8th um all kinds of podcast guys have shown up interviewing authors and researchers. You could spend all night uh, on the YouTube yeah. researching these. Um, and the podcasts are kind of fun. Some of them admittedly are a complete waste of time, but that's the internet, you know, uh, I, I have no expense. If it isn't any good, just go on to another one uh you know but there are conferences all over the place the thing about mufon i i don't i don't like the cast of characters they have on tv and ancient a this bill burns and nope. his other friends i think they're kind of i'll just say questionable i like them i like them but i i don't know if they're the first person I would choose as an authority. I mean, they it irritates me a little bit 
they sometimes try to use logic, but it's very bad logic. And they're, they're not objective, not in the slightest. All right, is that it? No, I have a question. Go ahead, Kelvin. Okay, um, two parts. Firstly, do you not think you've been a little bit dismissive of the, um, the problems involved in this, the distance involved? And um, Einstein's um, idea that you, you cannot travel at, you know, faster than the speed of light. And do you not think that also our idea of space travel has been clouded uh, to a degree by uh, programs such as Star Trek, where they, they show it, say, well, let's head towards this uh, planetary system, warp factor three. Now, and in actual fact, it would take months to get to Alpha Centauri at warp factor 10. Yeah, admittedly, there is no such thing as warp drive as a propulsion system. Uh, as I say, I have a background in transportation. Yeah. And Kevin, within 100 years, there's much cited, there was a guy, an academic, um, who uh, was it was it 1903 or 1907? He said, man will never fly. And three months later, the Wright brothers announced that they had designed an airplane. Man, man, man I can beat you. I can beat you. Uh, I live in Liverpool, which is the site of the first. Yeah, it was a British guy. It's the uh, it's uh, between Manchester, Liverpool, Manchester was the first passenger railway. And there were people that said you cannot travel faster than 30 miles an hour, otherwise yeah. your head will explode. Yeah, that, that train travel was impossible. You no, yeah, but you couldn't travel your faster, heart was, your heart faster than the speed travel. of the horse, otherwise your head would now, explode. You know, I grew up earlier at the college that it was always claimed that we could not fly, we could not have astronauts because of the Van Allen belt. Mm. They would die immediately. There was nothing well, you could do. There are, there are moon landing skeptics that's, that still hold to that. Yeah. You had them at the college. Ted Aranda yeah. doesn't believe in the moon land. Yeah, I know. Just it's, like one of, it's one of the arguments uh, put forward for it being fake. It was all, I kind of agree with him. It was all a movie made in Burbank, California. I, I, uh, personally, I have a problem with conspiracy theories in general. In the fact that I've never come across any organization that, that efficient. But but in answer to your question, getting back to it, any alien that might have a million years to develop a technology ahead of us, because they are an older civilization, they'd look upon our chemical-based propulsion and they would say, like, these are like like cavemen. <laughs> They're burning. They have a lot of rocket. It's, it's, it's ridiculous. Uh, we should advance and use thorium power. Well, I don't know if we want nuclear powered craft. Um, it has been investigated, uh, but apparently there were serious investigations about having nuclear powered craft aircraft and we don't have any today which you could argue why there isn't but how come there's no nuclear powered airplanes if you believe in rick doty he said that um they did try out nuclear power aircraft and there were leaks in the nuclear power um generators and it caused some serious issues in texas um, where they test flew some of them and uh, some, some, some people got seriously injured. Um, so apparently they did test that. Um, Fried, Friedman, Stan, Stan Friedman claimed it was developed 
and I don't know why it didn't. That was his job. He it's incredibly design. dangerous. It's incredibly dangerous. I can understand why the, the Air Force would say, uh, we're not going to pursue this any further. <laughs> yeah, because if a plane crashed, it'd be a 100-mile <laughs> field yeah. of radioactive debris. Just... And, and uh, railroad engineers don't like transporting nuclear waste. They want what they call buffer cars between them and the cargo, the, the cars. They want buffer cars. They're just empty cars empty that they don't want to be near that stuff. But during the Cold War, if, if the Soviets were going to try it, we were going to do it first. And under those circumstances, I understand why they may have tested that sort of uh, aircraft. Well, you got no argument with me against the, the achievements of socialized science. Remarkable achievements. Um, it's also an argument against the, any earlier being benign. Most scientific advancements have been, it's not been through necessity, it's been through war. Okay. We have Steve Grossman with another question, so go ahead, Steve. All right, Steve. Hey, Charlie. Did I hear you say that we have intact biological specimens of Bigfoot and gray aliens? Did you say that? No, we don't have Bigfoot. I spoke on that. But oh, I, I thought I thought you that, said that they say only one specimen of Bigfoot is necessary. I was giving an example that the Bigfoot <coughs> people say all we need is one one specimen to dissect sure. mm -hmm. of Bigfoot, and that will prove that they exist. And the same thing. All you need is one alien. We got four of them. Actually, well, I think what, there's... Why do you think that? Do why think do you that? think? Why do you think we have four alien specimens? Where did that come from? Listen, I, I read, listened to the testimony of the guy who was in charge. I showed you those cargo planes, and his job was to fly the aliens to Dayton, Ohio. And he said, he told the other guys on the crew, he said, gentlemen, we are making history. Now, if he was just transporting anything under the sun, why would he say that? Why do because you think are, his story? We why do you think making, he... We are making history. Why do you think his story is true or constitutes evidence of anything? Well, it's just a story. They call it hearsay in court. All of these, listen, they got 600 people. And if there's any contradiction, you gather them. It's just like assembling a witness team. That lawyer knows this. You put together a, team, a, a committee of witnesses and they verify one another. And if there's no contradictions, there are other guys on the crew and there were Marines who were, as a matter of fact, I looked out, there was, he says, there were a team of Marines who were there guarding it, or MPs. So you go talk to the MPs, other members of the crew, and they all give you the same story, yada, yada, yada. That's called, as I posted the slide, verification. And that is all you have for the existence of bodily remains of aliens. Well, I stories. told you there's a couple. Stories. They're stories. Well, the government, it's a, it's a contest with the government. Okay, I've got it. Us. I've got really? another, another, I have another question. Do you believe you. the government has done nothing proactive to keep us from getting the truth? Now, can you honestly say that after all I told you, they keep issuing stupid studies 
Charlie, I think I think the government lies all the time uh, about everything. Now that's not true. <laughs> but not let true. me ask you another question, may I? Yeah, oh, wait a minute. I'm going to answer Did, that. I used to issue press releases for the government. When the hell do you think I wrote? It was my job. And I, 40 years, I never issued one that wasn't 1,000% accurate and on the money. Another question, please? Not one. And you're telling us we lie? All the time. Well, they the government. Me, they didn't let me lie. And that's a guy that issued these. Of course, there are exceptions at the individual level. Exceptions. That's not what I'm saying. But let me ask you another question. Did I hear you say tonight that we have people trying to fly a crashed alien spaceship and they can't get it to work why would why do you think that because it, the military wants that technology it's called reverse engineering yeah but why now, do you think that's actually happening they're trying yes yes no evidence well go the, on. the wilson what memos the wilson is going on? as a matter of fact yes there is evidence one of the technologies that came out of it was night vision. They um, were looking at the alien specimens they had and they noticed like two eyelids. But as it turns out, I don't know. What, what, where did you get that? But aliens were able to see at night in darkness. What, what, what's your source, what's your source for from. that? What's your source for that? Of course. The autopsy. What autopsy? The aliens. There was no alien autopsy. Well, you're a number one. -er. I'm you're a number, number two. -er. I'm a number two, -er, actually. All right. You're getting there. You go progress. <laughs> anyway, I'll let, I'll let you go. It's been fun. But why, wait a minute. Let me ask, why do you think they, they, they got rid of that nurse? It was a little too communicative. I don't think it happened. I think it's a fable. Oh. Prove it. Cite it. Give me actual sources. Charlie actually believes it. The guy testified. He said one day he had a girlfriend, and the next day she was gone. Another story. Give me a citation or a source. You know, I got no reason to disbelieve him. Colonel Corso was the source for the night vision goggles. He wrote about it in his book. Oh, um, yeah. Colonel Corso was, the, he, he is, he's the guy. He was a, no, um, he was an aide to um, uh, Senator um, Sean Thurman, who was president of the Senate. I'm sure you're familiar with him. Um, what was that? That guy wrote a whole book. He wrote a whole book? I haven't read it. Technology right. from the. It was aliens. Eyewitness to Roswell. I believe that was the name of it. Okay. Um, and um, and what was the other thing you challenged him on? I was trying to think of. I uh, can't, can't remember now. No, I witnessed the Roswell Curso. What else did you on, um, Steve? What did you challenge him else on? Well, the claim that people are, are reverse engineering and trying oh. to fly a Thank spacecraft. Uh, the Wilson documents. Admiral Wilson, he was the head of the um, Defense Intelligence Agency. Um, the Defense Intelligence Agency is the CIA of the um, Defense Department. So think of um, former directors of the CIA, George Walker Bush. So uh, uh, Admiral Wilson was the former director of the Defense Intelligence Agency, whole separate entity. Um, he created memos that he wrote um, to document his search for why these um, reverse engineering programs existed, which he found about uh, discovered in 1992. Um, he found out from a friend, and he was curious about the uh, disclosure from a friend who was a scientist. And he then pursued for the next, I think, 14 years, what these programs were about. Finally, during the uh, beginning of the Bush administration, <laughs> became head of the Defense Intelligence Administration uh, Department of the Defense Department. 
and he got the you know gravitas of being ahead of that department to search for this and he learned that it was part of a reverse engineering program those documents have been um in the in the congressional hearings regarding this program have been brought up in the, in the hearings the wilson documents um richard dolan who's a famous researcher regarding uh ufo documents and you know uh, I suspect many of you are familiar with Richard Dolan. Um, he's brought those up on his podcast and his books. Um, it, I mean, this is this is known fact. Um, Admiral Wilson is it's known. I'm I'm just going on and on because this is just really known, um, well known fact within the UFO community. Um, go ahead. I'm just going on. Thank you. Okay. Then the engineering what? isn't new, Steve. It goes out back, back World War II. I know it. I know it exists. Okay. Uh, what I oh haven't God, seen. Day. What I haven't seen is evidence that it's actually happening in the case of the Roswell craft or any other crashed UFO. And I haven't they, seen. They would make. And then I can follow. They, they would if made. they could. Okay. They why they never landed? Why they never show up? Why, like you know, people blah blah blah. Believe me, I'm some believer, okay. But why they never ever show up? At least some real, really, really sign. Why Three not? Words. What do you think? What's Three. your opinion? What's Three your opinion? words: Klatu, Barada, Nikto. <laughs> okay, Robert, I have a question for you. Why? Why they never show up? Really? Are you practicing the CE five protocols? Huh? The CE5 protocols, they are um, they're made famous by uh, an individual named Richard Gere. Yeah, what about individual Valiant Tor? The CE5 <laughs> protocols. So CE5 protocols are a group of procedures for meditation and attracting okay. aliens. Okay, okay. Really? They're, uh, they're criticized by some, but I've actually done them, and I've never seen a ghost. Okay. I've never seen a UFO, but, 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 but I, I practice something. Let me finish. I practice but, something called the CE five protocols, and I've seen a a okay. ball of light show up over my house, wow. and I feel strange saying it because the first time I've ever described. But you know it. what I believe? I believe they communicate telepathically. Okay. Yes. I believe it. I believe it. But why they not really physically show up? Um, they're aliens. They have their own agenda. I suspect since they're aliens, it's alien to us. Um, okay. I but, don't know if they're good or bad, but they have their agenda. And okay, but you believe uh, you can telepathically communicate with them? No, I can't. I don't. I don't know what the hell they want. I just believe that they're showing up. They have some agenda that's alien to me. Mm -hmm. I suspect they know what it is, and it's serving their agenda, whatever that is. They're is honoring. It? They're honoring the prime directive. What is that? Tell me. I want to know. <laughs> That's the prime. I've spoken on this before. Um, the prime directive is followed in Star Trek, in which uh, you do not go to a lesser civilization what? and unduly influence it. To alter their course of 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 um, if you wish evolution. I've heard that opinion before. I agree uh, with it. The prime directive is you do nothing. Uh, yeah, they they could land and give them high tech stuff and all sorts of who knows beneficial uh, uh, things for life. And they say, and the Federation says, you know, leave these civilizations alone. Uh, uh, that that, that will never, you never get, you never get funding. Disrupted. You never get funding. Civilization and disrupted beyond consequence. You would never get funding for any any uh, endeavor without with a prime directive by that. What? You never get funding. You're right. I understand where you're coming from. <laughs> you never get what London funding. The, the, the defense department's not going to fund a defense no, project. No, whatever it is, even if it's an alien civilization, there's no money. There's no profits. 
yeah. we're just exploring and, and not doing anything. There, Explore, there's no not reason explosive. not to believe that an advanced civilization from another planet would not have advanced ethics. Yeah, they're not a, a threat to our country. I would they're... expect it. And you think, yeah, you you see some movies and they're evil guys, right? Mm -hmm. That zap you. Not necessarily. But Steve Grossman, I agree with what you said, okay? I agree. Steve? Yes, I'm thank here. You. Yeah, thank you. I agree with you. Okay, and Robert, I have a question for you. You think they will ever show up? A little bit, just a I, little bit. I think they've showed up a lot. I, oh. I, 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 unlike um, yeah. Charles here, I believe alien abduction phenomenon is real. I don't like that I believe in it. It doesn't do anything for me. It's uh -huh. uncomfortable that I believe in this. Uh -huh. But I believe it's true. I, I say it. It's very uncomfortable. I don't, I don't like I believe in the subject, uh, but I do for hmm. a number of reasons. Uh -huh. uh, mostly the credibility of the witnesses that I've talk to myself that mm -hmm. I've read about mm -hmm. um, they, they have interacted your question might be why don't they reveal themselves mm -hmm. there's some agenda that I don't understand that involves them not revealing themselves well, Steve Grossman what do you yes. think they ever will show up a little bit more physically I don't have any reason to think there is a them a they uh, <laughs> but it's some, you know, like some uh, smart, uh, you know, smart, how to say, smart civilization, maybe it exists. And, you know, and maybe they really, you know, they maybe they too smart to scare us. Really, they show some I, signs, you know? I, I, don't cer know. I certainly think the universe may well be filled with uh, intelligent life. Mm -hmm advance beyond our own in ways we can't imagine but i have no i i, I try to be scientifically based mm -hmm. i have no reason to think that there is evidence for the appearance of alien mm -hmm. intelligence on earth i just i just don't think there's any evidence for it from, i'd love to think there was mm -hmm. but i don't think so from a science-based approach you. That is a very rational belief. But from a common sense approach, due to the credibility of the witnesses, if you've searched this subject and recorded them and talked to the witnesses, and I don't like that I believe in this. I, hope you, <laughs> I hope you give a presentation on exactly this point in this forum. I was about to send a direct message to uh, Harley. The, yeah, the leader of our group, about the subject, Tim, uh, but I was the one who schedules I, speakers. I just bought it right. But it was it would take me about six months to do a credible uh, presentation on the subject because I believe in it so much, and I don't like what I believe, but it's it's true. Okay, Sharon, you got another question? Go ahead. Uh, let me just Thank add you. that uh, the before Sharon, uh, there's even one belief that why aren't we visited more often? Uh, the civilization that the aliens come from prohibited, and the only spacecraft that we see are actually malicious graduate students who are having <laughs> some fun. What makes you believe that the aliens aren't ourselves in the future? Yeah, they could very well be. Point. They could just be us. In the future. Exactly. They don't want to change history. Exactly. You cannot tamper with history. Oh, man, that's all that time travel stuff. You, you really would have some problems then, man. Oh, man. That would explain everything. Why you can't reveal yourself. There's a parallel I, universe. I have a system. thought here. I'm wondering uh, if the, the, the reason that we have such hard time finding aliens uh, or, you know, that that we don't see alien evidence of aliens all over is because maybe for the same reasons that we don't see so much evidence of um, a spiritual being, you know? Or they're Just the saying. same thing. They're the same because thing. neither exists. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'll drink to that. 
Steve, yeah, I like Charlie, what you uh, think. Charlie, do you find it uh, <laughs> do you find it strange that uh, that Thanks. in the days before cell phones, there were several of these alien and UFO sightings, and now in the time after cell phones, when virtually every person on the planet has a camera in their pocket, now we never see any pictures of uh, aliens or spaceships anymore. Hmm. <laughs> well, there it is my understanding. I've never seen it. There's a weekly TV show in Mexico in which people show their videos of their <laughs> their cell phone productions and things. Um, but yeah, it's enabled more accurate uh, <coughs> record keeping. I, I don't know why that, that, that helps us. That doesn't hurt us. May I say another thing about aliens? And I, I really don't know if I take this position, but it may also, like Kevin was saying, it may take quite an arduous journey for them to get to us. Just as he's maintaining, it's difficult for us to get to them. Well, equally so. Well, hell, with gas prices, I can't blame them. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Charlie, I got a three-part question for you. This will oh, come no. in. It's nice, but it's it's nice and easy. Um, how many siblings did your grandparents have? Your grand, let's see, let's see, how many siblings did your grandmother have on your mother's side? How many siblings did your mother have? And how many siblings do you have? So let's start with your grandmother first on your mother's side. How many siblings did she have? Six. Okay, six. And then how many siblings did your mother have? Three. Okay, and how many siblings do you have? I'm not going to say. No. Well, I know you oh. got one sister at least. Bob, oh, why did you ask this question? That's I met her. What's that? Why did you ask this question? Oh, no, no, curious. not you. Char no, Charlie. It's a great question. Go ahead, Charlie. So how no, many siblings I, do you have? I know you have your one sister. Do you have any other ones? I have a brother. I said three. Oh, so you have three. So it's six, three, three. Okay, and how many children do you have? I, I don't have any that you have zero. Carry so my name. six, three, three, zero. Okay, I have none that carry my so, name. Okay, so, so what I'm getting to is, uh, you know, in my in my rebuttal, or unless I give it now, um, there the reason that aliens and space travel in general is impossible, and I've said this before, is because a civilization can never get to the point where they're advanced enough for, you know, this, this, uh, you know, space travel going to other planets and stuff having, uh, because we won't have Pete. We'll never, we'll never um, get smart enough people to do it. We'll always backtrack on it. We'll always fold back on ourselves. Like right now we're, we're 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 less intelligent now than we were a hundred years ago. We're having, not, we're having we're having fewer uh, fewer smarter people after the after the industrial revolution. Uh, smart people had smaller families, and it's the less intelligent people that have all the big families. So what we've go. got is a situation we have fewer fewer smart people. So we're not going to have the you know the brain power necessary to create all these advanced uh, systems and everything you would need for space travel. Like I said, if we wanted to fly out of our galaxy going straight up, it would take 5,000 years at the speed of light. If we wanted to go across the galaxy and come out the other side, that would take 80,000 years at the speed of light. That's at the speed of light. And, <laughs> and you're thinking you'd, you'd have generations and gener thousands and thousands of generations of people to go through. 80,000 years to come out the other side. Then they're, then they're just out the other side. Then they got to get to somewhere. Unless there's, you somewhere, listen, unless there's right. some, unless there's some galaxy. We've heard this nonsense before 
that human intelligence is decreasing, which is the strangest libertarian concept I've well, ever. Well, no, it's because of, well, it's because of the uh, you know, see after the industrial oh, revolution. Wait a minute. Based out Darwinian the evolution. The why are we the most want, scientists alive Charlie, now than there ever were? Charlie, the, until until the industrial revolution, oh, smart why people, are the most scientists smart alive people had, now than there ever smart people had, been? Smart people had kids, you know, and survived. It was the smart people, the cleverest people that had the most kids, and they could survive. But now, after the industrial revolution, stupid people. Can have lots of kids, a, and and there's the more scientists now. alive now than right, there ever I have answer, been. I'll I mean, like it. when I say ever have been, I mean if you take all the scientists that have ever lived and died, there are more scientists alive now than then, than all, all of that bunch. So, Bob, we've heard this eugenic evolutionary argument. I know this is going back to the 30s. All this right. Is, this is pretty. Now, I was going to say regarding predictions of science, and I have not read the book. Uh, Stanton Friedman had real, wrote a book, and I believe the title is Science is Wrong. And they discovered 62 declarations that were made by scientists which were proven to be wrong. Now, these were guys, so I gave the example. The guy said that man will never fly. And they got a whole collection of these. And he yeah, said, I you, forgot. Are, yeah. you are number 63. We've, we've all heard all those. You are, you're saying what science cannot do which is not a valid assertion. First of all, civil say civilization, it will, it, you know, will fold back on itself. It'll, you know, we just can't keep. We're not. We're not advancing that far. Yes, we are. Get out of here. Well, America no, isn't. All right. Before we get in, before we get down this rat hole any further, I'd like to open it up to rebuttals now, if we can. And. Uh, you know, this I would like I would like to ask one more question, very quick. Um, right, no, no. Robert, Robert, listen. Sounds like you're very knowledgeable and pretty smart. Um, did you you remember? Thank I you. Thank you. Uh, Thank you remember you. I mentioned uh, Valiant Tour? You Wait. never heard Valiant Tour? Valiant okay. Tour. Yeah, go on YouTube, go on Google and take a look. It's really evident. And I would like to know more from the, you know, different opinion perhaps about Valiant Tor. He was visit our planet from Venus and Eisenhower had meet with him and uh, some scientist named Frank Stranger. And he put, uh, you know, he put- How do you spell it, Lana? Okay, L Valium, like V A L, I believe I A M T, Valiant, then space, Thor, T H O R. Okay, it's really evident, Valiant Thor. Are you talking about a being named Valiant Thor? Who yeah. A, yeah. A being? Was this being channeled by a human? Mm -hmm. So this being was channeled by a being, a human No, no, being. he never helped, you know. He voluntarily was visited. He, you know? So this individual, Valentor, he was not channeled by a human. He was, he visited right. this planet. Right, right, right. Like How, what, what individual interacted with this person? No, can you do me a favor? Can you read more? I'll read more if I. I'll, let's I, go I, to rebuttals, Tim. Yeah. All right, let's go to rebuttals. Okay, uh, Robert, if you All want, right, yeah, no, we're we can talk. Questions. Hold on, we you can talk more about, about it. Okay, Robert. It was a very interesting thing. Okay. Thank right. you. We got to get on to rebuttals now. All right, who's got a rebuttal? Robert, I know you have one. You're chomping at the bit. No, I'm not. I said okay. I. I... <laughs> 
I, I don't have a rebuttal. I, I said I'm, I need more information. I can't answer the question. Now, what we're doing now on this section is uh, we have our uh, – you'll get a chance to rebut the speaker for up to oh. a period of five minutes. I got Bob Matter right now. Um, who else would like to say something on the uh, subject, whether it's on or off topic? <laughs> I do, but I'll wait two or three turns in. Okay, Robert, that's fine. Robert Godley, okay. Who else? From Sharon? Charlie. I will. All right, Kelvin. Okay, uh, who else? Anybody else? Doug Binkley, you want to say anything? You always got an opinion. Ooh. And then Brian, I know you got something going on too in there. Yeah, yeah, put me down. All right, Brian. I came in late, guys, but uh, maybe I'll say something. All right, Doug, I'm going to do it like this, then. I'm going to give you guys each about five minutes. we got about five people. If anybody wants to speak, then go right ahead. And, Brian, I'm going to have you go first. Doug, you're going to go second. Bob Matter, you're going to go third. Kelvin, you'll go fourth. And Robert Godley, you'll go fifth. Is that okay with everybody? Mm -hmm. I just have a question. <laughs> Well, Sam, um, would you silence her? This is a request to the speaker. Uh huh. Sam, there's no need. Will you respect my wish and well, silence her? No, she drives you nuts, but she doesn't drive the others nuts. Sam, I. I oh, no, your wish will never grant it, ever. Sam, you're very rude. Sam, okay, thank are you. Are you going to do what thank I you. Not? I just silenced her. She can unmute herself, you know, too, Charlie. When you get a request from the speaker, I think you ought to honor it. Get it? Uh -huh. Well, may uh, the, 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 yeah, where's she back again? Well, she's back again because, like I said, she can unmute herself when she wants to. I can mute her now, and she'll just Good zap her. So, so can I go like third or fourth or something? I got to think uh, about what I'm gonna say. No, no, that's fine, Robert. I got you going fifth. All right, the that wasn't me. I didn't no, say it's that. Brian. <laughs> if you don't follow the rules, you get zapped into outer space. Charlie, you're going to get the chance to rebut everybody at the end of the, uh, as a speaker. So, okay. All right. Brian, you need to, you, what you wanted to go later? Yeah, please. All right. I'm going to reschedule this. I'm going to go Doug, then Bob Matter, then, then uh, Brian, then Kelvin, and then Robert Godley. So if that's acceptable, everybody, we'll just go ahead and do it that way. Unless I'll, I'll, I'll say something real quick, too. Okay. Uh, all right, Margaret, I'll put you after Robert, all right? Okay. Okay, Doug, you're going to go first. If you've got something to say, I'll give each of you, let's say 37. I'll give you each about four minutes. Okay, so, uh, Doug, if you got to say something, go ahead. We'll... Okay, you're throwing me into the pool here. All right. Uh, well, I was uh, down at the uh, rally uh, for uh, a program of women's rights. I don't know what the aliens think about that. I, I got delayed and didn't uh, get back here in time to catch the beginning of the talk. But uh, unlike uh, uh, Queen Victoria, I will say I was amused uh, and uh, surprised that uh, uh, Charles was taking the side of that. Uh, there is something to the uh, information of uh, sightings and uh, and uh, possibly abductions. So uh, um, I'm glad that uh, he has an open mind. I wasn't <laughs> sure about that. Um, obviously, the government ha having with the uh, with the ATIP program, which was uh, started by Harry Reid, which we hold a, a great admiration for him doing that, um, that they've actually admitted that there are uh, aerial phenomena that cannot be explained and and they could be either extraterrestrial or, you know, some kind of foreign government. Highly unlikely it's the Soviets, since they have proved that <laughs> their technology is pretty much sucks if they can't be beat the Ukrainians. So I don't think it's the Soviets that are um, outflying our craft. Uh, I don't think it's the Chinese either. But um, so that, that does leave extraterrestrials or, you know, some spiritual, ethereal or time traveling beings or something like that. Anyway, it, it's been proven that it does happen. Um, but uh, a lot of the uh, speculations 
um, that uh, whether Eisenhower met with them, whether there was a private compact. Uh, I don't know if Charlie touched on that earlier before I came in. Uh, we have a whole lot of things that are very scary about the alien abduction um, experiences that people have had. Um, we have a whole lot of um, loose ends to tie up, especially if the government really, they still pleaded kind of ignorance. They, they, they admitted to the public that there are these things out there. Um, they apparently wanted to maybe do a half measure, not really do a full uh, exposure of what they know. Uh, but they don't, they want to get people to the point where we're not panicking about it. And um, it seems like it's a, a more intelligent um, way to handle things instead of treating the public like they're idiots. So I don't have a real good conclusion to this. I think a lot of the stuff is very interesting. And uh, I appreciate the subject being back on the uh, College of Complexes menu. Okay, thanks. Okay, Bob, you're not next. So go ahead. I'll give you four minutes. Okay, so I, I uh, pretty much uh, so gave my uh, rebuttal already, and that is that, uh, uh, again, uh, you know, space travel uh, is and will always be impossible because we will never be able to reach the, the technology, you know, that technological level necessary uh, to develop, uh, you know, Th those capabilities um just now not like now our our uh iqs are going you know we're going backwards we're having you know there's fewer and fewer uh intelligent people than there used to be or i mean our, our iqs are going down um there may be more people but as a percentage or whatever you know the percent of the population i believe that's has those higher iqs is going down and again, this is uh, a result of uh, you know just what what we what we uh, what we've observed in civilization uh, after the uh, industrial revolution. Uh, smart people have fewer children, and dumb people have lots of children. And uh, the dumb people will overwhelm society like they're doing now, and that we're actually living through it right now. We can see it, um, and. Uh, and you know we'll we'll probably have a societal collapse. Uh, and you've got, <laughs> like I said, just look at the incompetence of the Biden administration, for instance, and, and uh, this belief that you wouldn't allow to pick their own lunch because they would happily pick to have ice cream and cotton candy for lunch. We're allowing them to uh, declare that they are a they think they're a different gender, and we're going to give them. Uh, you know, all this gender confirming care and surgeries and drugs and everything so they can become another gender. How, why, how do you think that's going to go in 10 or 15 years? And it's just, it's just crazy. Those of us on the right and the, let's say the reality half of the population are kind of, you know, a gasp at this, but there's just now not enough of us to, to make the change apparently. And we're continuing on this, uh, this railroad track to disaster and just look at, Everything that this administration has done has been a disaster. And it's uh, starting from the Afghanistan debacle and then uh, the undoing of our energy policy, uh, which is, you know, now and the, the inflation, uh, which is sort of directly tied to that. And uh, you see, we're just, you know, we're just on a, on a road for, uh, for disaster here. And so, uh, yeah. Yeah, we're not going to be building any rockets to be going to any uh, doing any space travel. We're we're lucky if we're going to have uh, you know child baby formula on the shelves anytime soon. And again, the uh, uh, this and this is you know now before the uh, before the industrial revolution, uh, you know there was there was Darwinian selection, and uh, you know smart people had you know you know the people that had kids survived were the smart people. But now with all the social welfare and everything, the stupid people can have kids. And I did a little experiment with Charlie. His grandmother had six siblings. His mother had three siblings. Charlie had three siblings. And Charlie has zero children. So Charlie Paydock has zero children. George Floyd had five children. 
there you go. There's a little analogy for you to sleep on tonight. Okay, that's okay. close to four minutes, Bob. Okay. All right, who's, uh, Brian, you're up and you're next. So I think it's pretty obvious that the Biden administration is working with the Bigfoots and the aliens <laughs> to, uh, to establish Earth as a, as a food colony and a food source for aliens doing international uh, or intergalactic travel, dumbing down the population in order to, ex to allow us to accept the yoke of the Bigfoots and eventually their uh, alien overlords. So I think the time to strike is, <laughs> is now uh, before they get us. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, the dialects are coming, right? All right, yeah. uh, Kelvin, you wanna say something? Yeah, 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 well, actually they're all lizards. Um, David Ike said so. Okay. Um, I want to take uh, in with uh, Bob's uh, great replacement theory uh, idea about the uh, civilization and stuff. All right. Um, if you actually look at the facts as opposed to like, um, you know, they come, they, they're going to take, they're going to take over type stuff. Look at something like China, where they introduce a one parent, a one child policy. The Education went up. The, um, the 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 basic IQ of the country went up. You don't ask the, 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 the you don't ask a comprehensive question when you ask somebody's grandparent grandparents siblings and their parents siblings and their siblings and their children. You should also ask what was their level of education? What was their occupation? Now I can tell you that uh, I, don't, I don't know how many siblings my great my maternal grandmother had. And it was probably quite a few. I know she was married at 12. I know that my, uh, my grandfather went to, went, went, to, um, went, went to see at the age of 10. I know that, I know that, my, I know that my, my, both, both my sisters, siblings had a good, good education. I know that my children have got degrees. And actually, uh, two of my, my, I only have one sibling. But all three of his kids have got degrees. Yeah, Calvin, so, point, point of so, order. So, no, no, the actual Calvin, point of order. The, the point is, Calvin, we'll point of order. Few, don't don't children, confuse it. The fewer don't children, the fewer children, with children intelligence. And, and the fewer children. Yeah, well, don't in, confuse in, in a degree society, with intelligence. Okay? Increases, increases the amount of education, increases the amount of prosperity, actually, also increases the net consumer. Of the conservation of that, of that country. Everybody talks about all these uh, third world countries overpopulation going to eat up the earth, earth's resources. You look, you look at America, you look at uh, uh, Europe, you look at all the first world countries. They have far per capita. In fact, just generally, they consume a lot more than the third world countries. They, uh, you know, Jesus, New Zealand probably consumes more than Malawi. You know, and that, you know, it's 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 a converse. It's one of those converse things. You have fewer children, but they are more intelligent, and they are more prosperous. And one of the ways to, you know, perhaps one of the ways to increase the intelligence of the U.S. Maybe you think the uh, intelligence is going down. Perhaps one of the ideas might be to stop burning books and increase increasing some funding towards your education system. And maybe allow, allow an abortion so that people can have fewer food families, so they can have a chance that one or two of those might make it to college. You've got eight kids, none of them ain't gonna go to college if you're poor. Well, or very, very rare circumstances if you get sports college yet. Okay, uh, is that it, Kelvin? Yeah. All right, um, I see your hand there, Sharon. I'm gonna go Robert, then Margaret, then you, okay, on the rebuttals. Okay, so Robert, you're next. Um, you get four minutes and uh, say your piece. Sure. Thank you. Um, I respect everyone who participated in the group tonight, and I really enjoyed the presentation. Um, I believe that the UFO abduction phenomenon is the real um, reason and the root of why government has suppressed the existence of UFOs. Um, I hope to go over that in a future presentation, although I didn't expect to actually give a presentation when I began tonight, join this group. Um, 
but I I love this topic. It's the reason why I joined this group. It's a great topic. It I believe when it's fully explored, um, everyone will agree that this is a great topic. Um, it joins the Republicans and the Democrats, those of you who believe in gun rights and those of you who hate guns. Uh, everyone will believe in that UFOs exist and that we should talk about it. Um, and uh, its roots date back to biblical times. Um, I, I really enjoyed our, the topic tonight, uh, discussing it. I don't have anything to rebut against anyone. Um, I respect uh, Chris's presentation. It was a good presentation. Uh, one, yeah. Only one thing I'm going to add is that there was another crash in Corona that you completely missed in your presentation. Oh, I know about it. You know about it. I know. I suspect you know about it. Um, that two exists. or three, I don't know. Yeah, that, that existed. Um, this topic was narrowly done, but but it's a huge topic that you can't do justice to. But you did a great job in trying, and I really respect it. I thank you for your topic. It was I wouldn't have joined this group without it, but I suspect I'll be in there in this group a number of times in the future because of it. And I thank you for that. That's all I have to say. All right. Another satisfied customer. <laughs> Thanks, Margaret Robert. Um, I'm sorry, Margaret, you're next. Hey, um, thank you for, uh, I know you did a lot of work on this <laughs> thing. Uh, but, you know, you can tell by the all the stuff. Um, I remain a total skeptic. However, I don't think you've really demonstrated much of anything. And it, it just doesn't make any sense for uh, everything to be hidden like that and you know all of the you know people were on some fine peyote out there or something i don't know anyway so that's that's kind of where i'm coming from and i also think that you know if, you, if there isn't neil degrasse tyson was talking about the whole situation he said <laughs> if they would if the people who were abducted would just take anything and bring it back from, from the ship, just take any season, an ashtray, anything, and bring it back. <laughs> you know, it, it would be some, given the conditions that the spaceship had to, uh, you know, go millions of miles and at warp speed or, you know, do the wormhole thing or whatever it is, that makes it possible for ships to go um, the incredible distances that are in space, that it would be a, a material that uh, we don't have. And so, you know, if people could just grab something and come, but nobody ever did that. They just let people stick things in their genitals or whatever. So, um, you know, I just, it's all a little it's all a little uh shaky as far as i'm concerned but you know we're all it's uh i i just tuned in tonight because i needed something that wasn't hideously awful as many things are now Thank my you. brother was abducted by aliens and all we won't be back was this asteroid <laughs> he was abducted bed, by bed, of, bed of memory metal he, he bought what? An asteroid made of memory metal. Yeah. Well, whatever. Anyway, <laughs> thank you. Okay, Margaret. For the record, you. Margaret, there are artifacts that have been examined and they do appear to be not manufactured uh, on this earth. And that has been done by researchers. Now, I don't have the information at hand, but it if, I, if I give a talk here again, I will go. I will present some of that. It was a professor at at Stanford, I forgot his name, but he's well known. Um, you can search a Stanford professor UFO research uh, materials, and he'll his name will pop up. Okay. Has anybody seen the memory Thank you. metal? Sharon's got one more rebuttal, then I will go back into. It. Okay, Sharon, go ahead. You got four minutes, and uh... Uh, uh, so okay, I just want to make a quick point about the one little comment. Um, about Bob Matter's um, statements. 
I mean, there's a lot that could be said there, but one little point is that he talks about the um, lowering of IQs and it, it just, I don't know if he understands how IQ is measured. It's IQ is a relative measurement of an individual population. So you cannot compare an IQ, uh, a current IQ with a past IQ level, you know, because it's a, it's a population measure. You measure within the population. So you're measuring individuals um, in the same population. You're not measuring one population against another. Just, just pointing that out. It's a relative measure. Okay. Um, all right. I'm gonna. You can't, you can't measure literally level level uh, level. So. Okay. You know it's fun, kind of funny. Robert, you know, if the Jews in the concentration camps would write us a letter, I'd believe in the Holocaust. That's why the general who went in to the Holocaust says, guys, take plenty of pictures because there'll be people who will not believe us. All right. Anyway, enough said about that. Sharon, anybody else want to do a review? I was joking when I said that. I didn't okay. mean it seriously. All right, Robert. It's no problem. <laughs> I, I need to put that on the record because this is being I, recorded. Understood, understood, <laughs> understood, understood, Robert. No problem. I just, uh, you know, and I, I prepare, okay, okay. It's a joke, joke. There's, well, there's a ton of inf a ton of records of people from the Holocaust. Well, Doug, um, Doug, we're not going down this rabbit hole. He just put something in the chat. And I thought it should be addressed. Is was... this being recorded? I need to address that. I was joking. I do I not mean were. that seriously. I know you, I know you All right, Let's move on. This is attributed to me in the future. I was joking. I didn't mean to be a serious joke. I believed in the UFO subject matter. And this was, you know, if, you were trying you know, to if it, you, someone was saying if only people who were abducted would go in there and uh, take something and stick it up their butt and take uh, it back to us, we would believe them. And I'm saying if only people in the Holocaust would take something, you know, and we'd find it in their ashes, we would come back and believe that the Holocaust happened. The same sort of ridiculousness associated with that okay. subject matter. Yeah, it, it sure is. Yeah, that, 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 thank you for explaining yourself, Robert. I needed to because I'm on video being recorded. Oh, I know that, but I, and I should maybe not have said it on the I'm from the chat anyway. Maybe uh, my, I'm, I'm, Actually, they did take photographs and they weren't believed. Thank All you. All right. Anyway, um, yeah. okay. Well, justified we then. There. Thank you, Robert, and I apologize if I uh, called you out on anything. You didn't. You didn't. You. Didn't, it was a fair call out. I wasn't. Yep. But yeah, anyway, the chair is not supposed all, to interject all's himself. All's forgiven. Okay. Um, all right, Charlie. Anybody else have a comment or a rebuttal, or shall I let uh, Sir Charlie Paydock uh, finally close us out? I'll say one more thing. Go ahead, Steve. Uh, if you can hear me, I think this whole notion of uh, of flying saucers, UFOs, uh, is built on stories, stories upon stories, stories upon stories, things people wrote in books, things that got compiled into articles, but what is actually lacking is physical evidence, convincing photographs, actually, almost everything. So I find Charlie's whole argument to be hearsay, stories upon stories. Uh, I enjoyed the presentation. Thank you, Charlie. Uh, I appreciate your mind and your uh, scientific background, but I don't think you're following the science on this one. So over and out here. Okay. Charlie, uh, you've got the closing remarks since you're the final speaker, and uh, take what time you need. All right, I'm not going to be too long. It's we're getting on. Number one, Doug brought up a thing I didn't talk about. Senator Harry Reid um, has financed one of the last things he did, and before leaving uh, the U.S. Congress, was to finance uh, research into alien technology. Uh, there's a, I don't remember the official name. The, it is financed by the government of the United States. And there's a research facility uh, outside of Las Vegas, Nevada. 
Krishna's purposes to as Steve says, oh, it's all based on stuff. Well, I believe in this research facility, they are actively pursuing uh, uh, to uh, the engineer of these things. So you, sir, uh, the burden of proof is, I presume they're doing something at this facility uh, that would be contrary to your assertion. Anyhow, uh, he also, Doug also mentioned, I believe there was a meeting at Eisenhower allegedly with the alien uh, delegation uh, in California, Palm Springs. It was told the press that he uh, was getting dental work or something like this. Uh, the press, because they said, what, why is there no record of what the president did during this portion of the day? And they said, well, he was just getting uh, dental work, emergency. Oh, he had a toothache or something, you know. So there's another cover-up for you. But you guys it, don't have any problem with cover-ups, I guess. It's I mean, persisted for 60 years, that story. Um, it's a good story. I don't know if it's accurate, but I, um, I, I suspect it may be true. I'm not certain. Once you understand that the government covered up the UFO, um, you know, crashed in 1946 and that the government had contact with the UFOs. If you accept that, which I do, you may not, but I do, then anything is possible. And the um, the conclusions that the, the reality that exists from that cover-up are, are ridiculous. And you can't, um, on a face of it, say anything is not true. You have to put everything in that maybe it's true. And a lot of those things that you may say maybe are true are uncomfortable to our belief system, to our religions, to our belief in reality. And um, that's my last statement for this group. Okay, now it, yeah, one of the things I brought up in the presentation was the, the quotation from the individual that was meeting with President Eisenhower in which he said, and I didn't look it back up, but he said, we've got to keep this thing secret. So it, it would be in conformity that if he was in fact meeting with extraterrestrials, he would not announce it to the general public. Uh, it's in consistency. He said, we got to keep it secret. And in his activities, he kept it secret. So right. there's, there's linear consistency there. I agree, I agree with the cover-up. That's my last statement. I agree with the cover-up. Uh, I would do the same thing if I were them. All right. Um, yeah, cover-up is one thing, my... but uh, yeah. Um, if Eisenhower made a deal that they could uh, abduct our citizens, whatever w was exchanged, whether it was technology or whatever, uh, uh, it it ought to be revealed now so people can make a, a, a decision about whether it was uh, uh, worth it. And that's that's where the, if the cover up, if the cover up was just because they were afraid of panic and everything, I mean, that's one thing that doesn't excuse the uh, secrecy for such a long period of time. But if Eisenhower did something nefarious, and I think that's what they're worried about revealing. And of course, for the longest time, there were people who might have had blood on their hands, as it were, and didn't want it revealed because they you have no. Jail. Wait a minute, Doug. Well, that, you have no a, basis for saying that. There's a lot of basis for saying that. There's a lot of documentation it's, supporting his comments no right there. You have to wonder since they're not, they're not coming clean about it. What happened? You shouldn't have. You have no basis. He could have agreed, cut a good deal. Well, we, that's why we'd like to know what happened, Charlie. We'd like to see. Yeah, the but you painted a picture that we like to do something nefarious. You we'd can't like defend to know, it. We'd like he, to know what kind of deal our government made with the aliens, whether they yeah, were raised. neutral. Or, Thank you. Fine. You can't defend it, but it's a well-known belief that uh, I've I've heard before. He's heard before. You've heard before um, that we understand exists, and um, I respect his belief. Listen, I'm a negotiator for many, many times, and I know this. You come out of negotiations, and they say Charlie gave him the whole 
store. I face that when it's not a true. People aren't there come to conclusions about what I agree to. What you don't they think don't you don't think I Eisen, you don't think Eisenhower could have by mistake agreed with an alien plan that would have sold out our store that would have given up abduction of our US citizens by mistake. He just no, he wouldn't not, have understand has, the implications. He, he was negotiating. Biases. He was negotiating with aliens. Alien beings. No. He was not a dumbbell. Eisenhower was a very smart man. Yeah. Very smart man. But you don't think he could have by mistake sold out to aliens? You cannot say anything conclusively regarding what he agreed to. You're right. I can't. I can't. I can't. Not conclusively. Not conclusively. I can't. Not on this subject. I win. You win. You win. You do win. All Nobody's right. winning, right. guys. If Eisenhower was presented with a situation where uh, we were in a dire predicament, uh, don't you me. have no basis for Wait. saying any whether it was plus or negative. At Wait, all. Steve, did this you thing get is hate constantly from me? messing with me on the mute button? But uh, if Eisenhower was presented with a situation mm -hmm. where he said, uh, "Mr. President, uh, the aliens." are threatening that they will take us over or they will cause serious chaos, but they will make a deal. They will give us some technology, but they will occasionally abduct some people. You have if he, no that, if he had to make a deal with the devil, if You're he had to make a deal with the devil, at least they should come head. clean with us and let us know that it happened. You have no idea, Doug, what's on the table. I, I, I'm I saying know. what possibilities are. And there's a I, thousand. I have, I, oh, Kim, I have an idea what could have been on the table, and I just how you were been. there. I read and besides, he would have just given them. I ran into this amazingly. I'm a negotiator. Okay. People are not at the table, and yet they confidently say what was negotiated. Okay. And I don't know how. All right, you guys. I, I think oh, no. it's time we uh, stop going down this rabbit hole. All right, right let me get on. Let me get my, my turn. Go ahead, Charlie. Hey, that's Doug. And now regarding Bob Matter, we're going to take up this replacement theory, which is nonsensical and nefarious, that I've got to be worried about the 1%, which is ridiculous. <laughs> We've got to gear our society for the 1%? Are you for real? <laughs> they haven't got enough already in wealth and, they, and we have to protect them. I just arrest them and put them on trial for crimes against the state. Are you for real? And get rid of poor people. <laughs> poor people are all stupid, right? Come on. Look at a premise like this. Baby people are poor because of circumstance. It's not always oh, choice. Oh. Poverty is a, is a result of circumstance or choice. You're saying they're all indolent and stupid. That's like saying all rich people are rich because they have attributes that I'm lacking. <laughs> <laughs> now, the other thing is, I've heard this that we cannot fly, we cannot do this. Now, we even had a lecture at the college. I remember Bert McCloskey, he was arguing that if you take the laws of his of science, one cannot, an airplane cannot fly upside out. And he's absolutely correct. If you, we heard Bob telling us why airplane, how they fly, yet, if you use the same log, same arguments, airplanes cannot fly upside down. When in fact, airplanes fly up and down all over the place. But if you, on paper, the arguments for design are uh, at the thing of a plane, mean it could not ever, no, no intelligently aircraft could ever go upside down. And in fact, they do so all the time, regularly. All right, enough for 
protecting all. Oh, I'm going to worry about the one percent. Yeah, uh, Brian, um, what the aliens will be looking for is not to turn the Earth into an Earth food colony. Uh, if you get into the geology, um, every square cubic foot of the Earth is full of minerals. Uh, I think in comparison of planets, the Earth is unlike any, it's a, the, the, the rock, it's a rock. It's full of all kinds of wonderful things. <laughs> and if there's anything the aliens would be looking for, it's to set up some sort of mining operation um, that different, they could find anything else they wanted. Anyhow, all over, they'd have to come here. But um, that's why your planets differ as those different from those gas giants. Who needs to go to a gas giant? Well, I guess if you want some of that stuff. But uh, that's what I mean. The inner planets are, are, are mineral rich. Now, if they really need mineral, I, even that I find a little hard. But that's regarding Robert. Um, <laughs> Robert, um, I, I think I, uh, I, don't know, I don't know why I don't have anything regarding that. I can't remember. Um, and Margaret, they've not been telling the truth from day one regarding this. Uh, they have not been telling the truth. If they've not been telling the truth regarding day one, yeah. it began. It began with any reasonable person would question they, they set on a course of action and that's what happens when you don't tell the truth you've got to resort to additional untruth uh, to seemingly repair any questions that are raised so yes it's an endless cycle oh well Robert I just wanted to say uh, come on back. You don't have to do a lot of work. Just put it together. I need some speakers for August. Robert, <laughs> on the, say, on the agenda. Okay. Um, you need some speakers for August? I, I'm not sure August. <laughs> on the UFO abduction phenomenon, someone's going to do a presentation put on it that. Together. It's got to be. It's got to be legitimate. No, not on the UFO abduction phenomenon. If there's oh, any you know, matter, they ready. say you know you need your time to convince us. Well, you're not taking it seriously then. <laughs> all right. Now, last of all, uh, my good friend Steve here is still a skeptic. Now they put together. Now this is only one incident, <coughs> Steve. One incident encounter with aliens, and they have 600 people who will verify that the what I told you tonight is 100% accurate. There's no contradictions. Now, I assure you, if I went to a hearing in any court, and I told the judge that I have 600 people who are willing to testify. I don't have to subpoena them. They are voluntarily willing to testify in agreement, total agreement <coughs> of what happened someplace. And he says, that's not good enough. Well, I, what? What is your criteria of truth, sir? I'd like to remind Charlie that hundreds of people throughout the centuries testified in Inquisition and in the courts in Europe and in the courts in this country in the 16th and 17th century. They were coerced. They saw witches and they saw things fly. Air, was torture, and, torture. But, well, well, Mohammed and Jesus testified in the Bible and the Torah. And, 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 and we can, do, if you These want to talk about myth making, let's talk about Christianity. But at any rate, they uh, are not coerced, Aunt Margaret. 
They're doing it voluntarily. They're even breaking the law. It does say, they it, these are people who came forward and said, no, I saw Agnes fly through the air. Right. They right. want to tell the truth of what they but, saw. You know, you can't say the number of people like that. They have their accounts written down. Well, they have their accounts written down in the Middle Ages, too. No, that was coercion. That that's a handful. No, oh, she's right. She's absolutely right. Not all of those testimonies were coerced. And you had to testify against someone in order to live yourself, Margaret. You know that. Well, you know, in regardless, buy, regardless of, of say, what you're saying, saying there it. were certainly a number of people who came forward voluntarily. I, I will say, is Margaret right. a witch? Yes, meant I would live. If I said no, I then I'm a witch. On that note, we're going to stop recording. We'll turn the knowledge of complexes. You know that. And what's going to happen? Well, well actually, she, she, she's absolutely afterwards. right on that. She, she, well, no, she's absolutely going afterwards. No, she's entirely she's wrong. Absolutely right. If you read, <laughs> if you if you read the accounts the of the Salem trial, the pendulum was closed. Officially closed. We'll keep the Zoom call open. Oh my God.